stream is up. No, I panted. My voice giving in. Just... Like a killer or murderer. These were gentle, soothing, strangely warm, even if unshielded to the blistering cold of our... Fighting for my dignity and defending against a creature whose intention was nothing more than having sex with me. Oh yeah, stream thread. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Comedy. Video game. What else is on YouTube? What are we doing with our lives? What What's happening? I, what's comedy? Just <laughs> waste. <Yeah. laughs> I, I come in and everyone's having a laugh and riot. You You missed it. It's over. Love is over. Dang. Oh god, he's still <coughs> listening to it. Why are you doing this to us? You hate us. <laughs> Don't actually do that. The other was still busy fueling my womanhood. Rather, uh. <laughs> floating up into the air a few feet as he continued to please my aching body. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know I've been my dreams. Nice Great. Hot him. Is the stream no, I'm actually live? Because it's not showing it. Wake up in the middle of the night. You're not sure what the hell's yeah. happening. I heard a lot of yelling. <coughs> yeah. Am I yelling? Who? Yeah. What? Who are you again? I'm I'm I Alex. I live here. I live uh. here. I live here in Skype. Oh, I should add. I should add Stoutfish to the call again. He's the world's first Why digital elf here. I exi I I hail from the magical land of the internet. And why are we in space? Shit! Why, why are we in space? Said Jesus. Space rules. Mm -hmm. See everything from space. A Gundam on a motorcycle just rode by. Because that is literally a, a fan fiction that exists Are you about shit Gundam? while we in space. <laughs> oh, my PS2. Said Jesus. <laughs> and that can actually be a thing that happens in PS2. I guess I gotta give you a contact request before I can add you. No contacts. There. No contacts either. No, I'm gonna add you to this call. You're gonna be in the other call. There you go. Stoutfish's Skype is weird. Yeah, it is. It is weird. Only only Kite was able to figure out how his Skype was supposed to function. That, God this, damn it! This doesn't make any sense. No, he had to. He had to do something special. He had to do it without dragging. There, did it. Join. I have got now three boss weapons off of sea cards and he hasn't dropped his goddamn scroll. <clears throat> I just got his boss unique uh, hand cannon. Oh, he actually carries a hand cannon. Yeah. A hit mm, would give you his lightsaber. I got his lightsaber. I also got his armor. Neat. So, inflict oh, light damage, see. laser rifle plus two, laser rifle size plus 30%. Now equip all of them at the same time. I can't, I'm a fighter, I can't use any of them. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Can use the armor. Yeah, but the armor sucks. And it's plate. No, no, yeah, no! <laughs> oh god, already. I am bad at Skype. Hi. How do things happen? Right. Open. Open your car doors and become a plane. We're gonna... <clears throat> I already fucked up the race again. <laughs> Wait, is this the same race? Yeah. I just wow. started. Oh, race? okay. Wait, are you streaming? <laughs> yeah. He is streaming. Oh. Okay, I just need to refresh my stream. It was still showing me Goofy. Done. Yeah, it does that sometimes. No it doesn't. Annoying as all hell. Oh, God. No hands back, right? Right. Okay. Hey. Hey. Like, uh, your stream's up? Yes. Yep. The gauntlet has been thrown. What? 
Oh, are you gonna? Is like URL up? Yeah. Okay. Kick. The Kick gauntlet me. has been thrown. <laughs> He's the host. If. Kick if the host. There, <laughs> if I receive forty-two dollars in donations, I will read Trevor's tricks. Oh God. No. What is that? I don't that's not a good. Know. That's not a thing you want, you, Red. You, 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 just so you know, that is that is a you definitively need to read bad thing. Trashy 1970 sci-fi. Kite, this isn't usually how donations work. Generally, you say you're gonna do something that people would enjoy if you get donations. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm sure someone out there is into it. Hey, Miko, uh, why is your character in San Andreas an unknown? Uh, that's no, not that my character. That's yeah, Pat upon and that's Caesar. Okay, CJ looks like CJ. <laughs> oh. You can never get hit that one to work, could you? I, I like I like the guy Wait, who is Chuck obviously se who is Chuck Green. I like Chuck Green. Yeah, Chuck his arms look tiny as hell though. Yeah, I don't know why that is. They, they call him Baby Arms Chuck. <laughs> 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 they don't call him Widow Chucky Green for nothing. <laughs> uh, So are you gonna flip the car in the exact same spurt again, Miko? I already fell in the water, so. Never stop. The rock. Lobster. Sad Andreas. Sad Andreas. Sad Andreas. Why are you so sad, Andreas? Sad Andreas. Sad asterisk. All you had to do was sexy pumpkin dance, CJ. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm surprised what? nobody has made a pumpkin uh, model for CJ yet. <laughs> yeah, where the hell not? I, I don't know. I don't even know what a pumpkin model is. You know about pumpkin.avi. Just... All you have to do is just put a pumpkin on his head. That's um... it. Nope. You don't even have to... Yeah. The game will probably provide the black body suit. I don't even know how I don't know how to blender, so I, otherwise I would do it. Give me the models. Give me the French fries. I can't do that, but I can give you the extension that saves it in the format San Andreas needs. <laughs> okay, you need to put uh, boobs on everything. Oh. Oh no. Well. Ah. Uh, how to house and three easy steps. <laughs> Okay. Do you, I don't know I'm gonna you get it this time. I can feel it in my veins. Do you absolutely have to jump the barn? No. No, but if I barn. crash into it and flip my car over, that's, you know, bad. <laughs> <laughs> like this. This is bad. That's so long. Oh my god. <laughs> what did you do to the physics? Wow. What, what physics? This is, there are no okay. physics here. What did you do to the gravity? I can't get out of the thing. Here we go. All right, everything's fine. You have to go around. So Sad I'm gonna race in this pickup truck. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Race on a bike. Eater down. Oh, you can oh, race Mario, on a bike. What's up? <laughs> he just dropped it in. You lost oh, hey. What's up? Oh hey, what's up, Mario? Go tell Mario. It's another Mario truck <laughs> <laughs> I can use this car though. That'll work. I've heard of Hotel Mario. It's the place. Phillips. CDI. CDI. And the only reason that they even had the right to use Mario in a video game was because they tried to make a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo or Famicom. And the contract blew out so they had the right to Zelda and Mario as long as it didn't co contradict with any of the other like pre existing titles. <clears throat> I why it's not what? Yes, not contradict with any pre existing was it, titles. Was it the Super Nintendo or was it the N64? The N64 no, because uh, they were going to make the PlayStation add on for it, which is why on Super Nintendos you can see the PlayStation add on function on the bottoms. But, uh, yeah, they, yeah they tr the first they tried with Philips and that didn't work, and Philips used the technology to make the CDI. Then they tried again with Sony, and that's why they have the, the PlayStation, and that's why 
Actually, you got it backwards. First, Nintendo was doing it with Sony, and then Sony was like, "Hey, we can make our own friggin' system with this." I I, I thought the, that the that the reason why they broke up was because they were deciding whether or not to use discs or cartridges. I thought the reason they broke up was because Nintendo betrayed Sony by making a deal behind their back. Like, I had heard that was because the difference between discs when it comes to loading times as well as memory capacity. So I wanted to use discs which had loading times that had greater memory capacity while Nintendo didn't want to have to work with loading times. So they still wanted to continue using cartridges like they had up until that point. And because they could never agree, they ended up breaking it off and Sony ended up keeping the right to the controller design. Which is why we ended up getting the N64 controller. All I know is Nintendo messed up by not doing a thing with Sony. It's cool. N64 turned out fine. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah but imagine how yeah, good it could be if it was also the PlayStation at the same yeah. time. There would have been hey. no competition. Nintendo probably would have had that generation completely. Maybe the Dreamcast would have had a shot if that didn't exist. No, that's the Saturn's fault. If the Saturn didn't exist... <laughs> if the Saturn wasn't... If it weren't for that blue whore, we'd still be playing Alex Kid 3 and Sega Jupiter 3D! <laughs> I'd buy the shit out of that, and I don't even know what it is. Consoles. Yes. Does your uh, chat have links? You can do it, yes, it does. Okay, I got it. The great Sega titles such as Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Oh, there's a thing here. Oh no. I've gone outside the boundaries. Nintendo killed Tupac, though. You had one job. What do you expect? Sympathy? This is Los Santos. People would give their right arm and left leg to live here. It's paradise, but you And you still have to read Slender Bone. Get out of the nuclear reactor. Yeah, uh, I I would like to respectfully decline reading the first two pages of Slender actually. Um one sec. Please don't read Slender Bone. Like, it's not graphic at all. It's just Why would you not want to read Slenderbone? That sounds like a lot of fun for everyone. Disrespectfully declined to read There's a Wesley Crusher erotic novel. You can read that. Oh, Lord. Just read anything that's in customers who bought this also bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the horse bask, and then you look at the customer version of that, and you get, like, a... Oh, no. Oh, no. There's... Oh, I'm losing now. Oh no, someone passed you. I'm losing. Oh no, you got passed. However, will you catch up? You're not gonna catch up, man. Yeah, it's over. Oh, oh, oh. This race is pretty long. I might actually do it, but I'm still only in second. I don't know where the other guy went. Oh, there he is. I see him. I'm in a reasonable time frame. Gotta go fast. Trying. Faster, faster. How can you lose this race? It's like. Not even that hard. I have never played San Andreas for more than like That's an right. hour because somebody brought it on a USB drive at school one day and I was like, sweet, great, I thought it. And then I got bored because I couldn't play very well. I remember one guy, he was able to get Steam working on a school computer so he could play Left 4 Dead 2 single player. <laughs> <laughs> At on a school computer. I have no idea how he pulled it off. I was like, why are you bothering to play Left 4 Dead 2? It's not fun by yourself. I lost. Awesome. You're, you're, you were bad. so close. Uh, third place. Oh. Always in my heart, third place. There's, there's someone in the chat who says that they will make it happen for the $40. Give Kite forty dollars so he can buy a good video game. Is it even like a book? It seems like something that would just be like a series of DVR pages. Because <laughs> like I looked at the preview and it looked like pic uh, not pictures, text. There was this young girl. It's available on Kindle. That's all you need to know. <laughs> young woman who was in the Slender Forest, and then there was a the Slender Man, and he was like. Yo, hmm. let's have sex. But okay, I, I do it. have to, uh, I, I'm gonna read Slenderbone just to give people an idea of what kind of money they'd be putting for, so. <laughs> it's Goku. Uh, Goku. This is the preview <laughs> page for Slenderbone. Oh, jeez. Slenderbone, starring Goku. 
Slender <laughs> He isn't coming for your soul, just your virginity. He said he was ever coming for your soul. We don't know what he does. Slenderbone, published by Gregor Daniels for Kindle, copyright 2012. Gregor Daniels for adults only. Yeah, yeah they do free Watch out! You're going to get Slenderbone. <laughs> oh God. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> That's good. This Just is gonna turn out terrible, man. This will happen I ignored Alexia's <clears throat> ring for the moment. Not at all sharing her concerns or beliefs in the existence of such a supernatural being. It was trans. It was a transformed kid story at most. A version of a familiar monster under the bed. Only in the stories that were spread around town, the monster's motivations were more adult in nature. Whatever, I shrugged it off, staying close to my friend as we walked through m the campus, avoiding fast-moving bikes and keeping our jackets closed tightly in the chilly October air. Oh, jeez. It's just no, some no, 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 story. no, 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 oh, fuck. Till they get to meet him, then they aren't so sure of it. Whether the story of Slenderbone was true or not remained a mystery. How many pages is this? Even my friend believed in such. Even if my Dude. friend believed in such fairy tales, I was apprehensive to recognize such a, a ridiculous story as fact. The legend is the sort of tale that only those who believe in Santa would consider taking as truth. Slenderbone was a supernatural being, or <laughs> just some disturbed man. I wasn't sure. The stories all differed on his appearance and nature, even giving him special powers in some mentions. Regardless, most accounts depicted him as a really tall man, almost unnaturally so. Not only was he a head above most professional basketball players, but his arms were typically said to be inhumanly long, reaching down almost to his knees. Still, besides the strange details, he was said to have the appearance of a man wearing a suit and tie. By far the most creepy aspect of the folklore was the fact that he was described as not having a face. He had the skeletal structure of a human being for his head, but where a pair of eyes were was completely sealed shut. No lips, no ears, no discernible features that humanized his presence. Slenderbone was by all accounts a figment of the imagination. A scare story for the girls who <sighs> lose their virginity. As they all said, if a girl didn't have sex before college, she was going to get a visit from this strange being that walked in the shadows and only appeared at night when no one was around. They were going to get no. slender. Mm. I'm so bad at this. Oh. That stuff sounds like glorified rape, Alex. I said, "Some what? man come <laughs> take your virginity." <laughs> glorified rape. <laughs> what? See, this is funnier when we realize that Maiko's real name is Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows about his dick. No one knows. Some man coming to take your virginity against your will. I can't believe in such stuff like that. Whoever he is, he needs to be put in jail for starting such a story. And what makes you think was one person started a story, my friend turned to me. Hundreds of girls have seen him, Jamie. Outside of their shower, in the bushes at night, peering in through the window. Slender man, uh, nah. Slenderbone is more than just a legend. I merely snorted. And besides, it's not my virginity we're talking about here. It's yours. We remained silent as we took the steps up into Douglas Hall and up the flight of stairs for our next class, psychology. Just before the entrance to the classroom, I heard a couple of girls talking to one another. I should have ignored their voices as mixed background noise. But the subject of their conversation grabbed my attention. I don't know, Becky. One of them said. I think I saw oh, my God damn it. looking through my window. She was visibly distraught. It's oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Stop, stop going so fast. You don't need to go so it's fast. It's a race. I have to go fast. He isn't going to harm you. He's merely there to warn you about what's coming. The other girl shook her head, perhaps not believing her friend. No, she whimpered. I don't want him to. It can't happen like this. I must have been standing too close listening in on their discussion because both of them turned and looked at me. What do you want? The girl that was apparently Becky asked me. 
I didn't respond and headed into the classroom thinking about what the distraught girl had said, but mostly blowing it off as my imagination getting a better hold of me. Nice try, said Alexia as we sat down. No matter what you do to get me to believe that crazy shit, I'm not going to. What are you talking about now? Those girls, I said, pointing at the couple of classmates that just entered. Glancing them there so I would hear their conversation was smart on your part, but I'm not going to believe it. You're really not going to change your mind, are you? Alexia asked. I've been trying to warn you, Jamie. But if you don't accept the facts and find a boy soon, you'll see for yourself. Oh yeah, and what's going to happen if I don't? Alexia smiled and turned to face the instructor who had just entered and set down his things. I don't even know those girls, and I sure as hell didn't tell them to stand there talking. Action! End of this sample Kindle book. Like the uh. Buy now or see details for this book in the Kindle store. You can, you too can buy Slenderbone, Paranormal First Time Erotica, Kindle Edition by Gregor Daniels, copyright 2000 whatever the fuck, for $2.99 at Amazon.com. Yep. Reverse read my mind. Don't read <laughs> Imagine <Rachel>. Santa Claus <laughs> coming to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Slender Claus. Does he bring gifts? Does Santa he, Man. Does he, give he brings gifts, gifts alright. If by gifts you mean death. No. No. Slender Claus is a dick. He like randomly shows up in video footage of old Christmas photos and then you find all your Christmas gifts missing. Oh, what an ass. Does he give me twenty dollars? Give me twenty dollars, give me $20. $20. I don't even know that song. Why do I know that? What the fuck? <laughs> I never uh, heard that. that. That's a new thing to me. Go to YouTube. It, it kind of sounds like Ghetto Santa, where he breaks into your house and robs you. <laughs> Straight out of Compton. Yeah, that, that that's a thing. I, I like the typos and how it makes no sense. That, that's my favorite part. Oh God, fucking damn it! I right, like how. Best thing about these bad books is just how overly descriptive they are of mundane that. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, my favorite part is like, oh, you obviously set those up. And you can just hear, oh, I don't even know those girls. Dun, dun, dun. I could just feel that, that that's what they were going for with that. I like how they constantly. Okay, I think I'm in the clear. Over and over again. That's the part oh, so where like, I went I... careening over a cliff. Like, literally, just... The main character trying to rationalize disproving Slenderman seven times. I like how there's three a giant splutter attacking me right now. I also like how you can't help but say Slenderman even though it's Slenderbone. I'm not gonna say that word. It is a retarded <laughs> word. <laughs> I'm not gonna do- I'm not gonna, gonna get my Slenderbone on. With such language. Oh my god, she was Slenderbone. <laughs> oh god, never mind. what did you do? She was Slenderbone the entire time. So, um, hey Micah, guess what? What? Don't. Nope. What? Oh, uh, you actually got the money? The guy went through with it. Oh, no, 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 I'm so close. I'm so close. No. Wait, what you got? What are you gonna buy? Uh, <laughs> Looks like Miko's excited to hear Trevor's tricks too. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, when you kill the Slenderbone, you become Slenderbone. Mission finished. It is the way of the world, unfortunately. Winner! One. Only took Triple you three threes. minutes. Only one thing left to do. Seconds. Yes! I may yes. have to say, like... Fuck. Oh, you got saved by the cutscene. Never mind losing to a guy. <laughs> oh god, why am I inside the lava? Stupid spider. <laughs> What's up with his, 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 like, shoulder? What is that? It's not even attached to his body properly. Look how he retracts his head into his neck. <laughs> Trying to find Trevor Strix online for free got me, uh, American Horror Stories as the third result. <laughs> oh god. It is quite terrifying. Truly the American horror story. Oh god! Oh god! 
Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that was beautiful. It was, a, it was a flashback before you drove off the cliff. <laughs> I remember when that guy gave me some money. Yeah. Oh, man. I met Chuck Green. <laughs> I met Chuck Green and he was a total dick. Oh, my SMG <laughs> skill's maxed out now. That's cool. You are a hitman. Now you can dual wield SMGs. Yes. Alright, so here's how this is gonna work. Uh, I have to go through a chat figure out who actually did the donation thing. Okay, it's have probably me. the guy that the heaven here. He's the one who, who said that he would do it, and the one who said that I told you. It's most heavy. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Has anyone ever like downloaded a Kindle book from uh, like Amazon before? Nope. No. No. You're gonna no. read the entire thing. I've had the Kindle app on my phone since I got it, but I've never purchased a book. I was gonna say, like, do I actually have to have a Kindle to get, like... Uh, there's a PC version book? of the program there you can get. There is a computer version. Funny computer. I wonder what it'll do if I didn't go into this with a car. Yeah, you don't, oh, you hey, Bulbasaur! Preview, dude. Or is it only available on... Mega Man. Oh, you did replace Claude. Hey, Ezio, what's up? Mega Man X. Oh god, the Bulbasaur. What are you gonna do with that crowbar, Bulbasaur? Will that Bulbasaur bring out the floating knife again? Bulbasaur, put down the crowbar. That Bulbasaur is the best character in the game. Alright, that's fine, okay. Because I realized after I, like, m threw that gauntlet down, I realized I never actually said that I was gonna read the demo bit, so I realized that I could've accidentally caused him to think that by putting down $40, I would read the whole book, which, to be fair, I probably would if I could get it for free without having it in, like, my history at all. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> you're just gonna have to man up, Kite. My new trainer. <laughs> All right, Trevor's Tricks, a story collection by Fuzzwolf. Oh with no! Illustrations by Lapon Bo. Trevor's Tricks, a story collection by Fuzzwolf, Fur Planet Books, an imprint Dude. of Argil Argil Productions LLC. Copyright 2007 by Fuzzwolf. No part of this book may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic or mechanical, well, fuck you, including photocopying, recording, fuck you, or any information storage retrieval system without permission in writing from Argel Productions LLC as agent for Fuzzwolf. This book has an ISBN number. I, I can't help but laugh at the fact that it's that they're representing somebody who wants to be known as Fuzzwolf. I just can't take that seriously. <laughs> uh... Fur Planet Books, a division of Argel Productions, LLC, Dallas, Texas, www.furplanet.com. Shit, I'm in the same state Wait, with these Fur guys? Planet? Damn it. What is, is this a furry book? Yeah, yeah it's, it's very much. Come Shit, from. I'm in the same Wait, state. Wait, where am I? Guys? Oh, damn it. The fuck? Tehran, oh, jeez. My mother, may she never read this. <laughs> she least, probably then why would you publish the book? Because he thinks he can make a profit. Never publish anything your mother, you wouldn't want your mother to read. Well, he, it's not under his name, it's under the name of, of Fuzzwolf. Fuzzwolf? <laughs> I just imagine, like, his mother buys the book and they're at the breakfast table and is like, Can you believe someone wrote this? <laughs> I wonder what I found at the grocery store. Actually, why would he be at a grocery store strong with me? That'd be really stupid. This book contains a selection of stories in the life of Trevor. The hot little fox whose initial shyness hides a writhing sea of horny kinkiness. Whoa. <laughs> Is this gay furries or what? These stories were written between 1999 and 2007 and were not written in order. They are presented in here. Hopefully they hang together well enough to be enjoyed as one story despite being written out of order. Okay, so this is an erotic furry story. 
Yeah. And you're gonna read it? It's a collection of erotic furry stories. <laughs> okay. That, oh. that, that, that he hopes that you can kind of create a narrative out of, but it's really just bullshit one shots. It's just funny. These tales were written to be something you could fap to. No more, oh, no less. Oh no. For the most part, I wrote about... <laughs> you can leave the light on, huh? <laughs> For the most part, I wrote about... I'm a whore. <laughs> I was paid money to read this. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Pretty much. Kai, you are now a furry whore. How do you feel about that? Eh, money's money. Whore is fuck. So I give a shit. I do what I can to survive, and that's reading furry porn books. Hey, I'm not gay, but 50 bucks is 50 bucks. So. Oh, hey, I'm back in first. All right. <laughs> we don't we don't talk like that where I'm from. Them's fine words. Here in Furry, Texas. Uh, why do you? I'm from Austin. I'm not from Dallas. Don't associate me with these guys, please. Hey, late. You're associated. Shit. All them furries are in Dallas. Yeah, all we have here are a buttload of hipsters, rednecks, and a strange combination of the two. It's now a furry. Hipster rednecks? Yeah, it is the strangest thing. They really like wearing red plaid. Drum <laughs> <laughs> rusher steers and queers. <laughs> oh god, I bet that's the name of a book somewhere on Amazon. Quite possibly. <laughs> You might as well look it up. I like the floating Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is still the best character. I like how it floats. Bulbasaur learned to fly. Man, they really changed up Pokemon since, since I was a kid. The Dewey Decimal System was not prepared for a rock. What did I get myself into? Late on this, or do you want to sit down? Would you like the laptop on your lap? Alright. These tales were written to be something you could fap to. No more and no less. We don't talk about this. <laughs> for the most part, I wrote about kinks, and I enjoyed uh, and created characters I thought would be sexy and interesting. Originally, I wrote these only for my own amusement, but I was gratified to discover that these, that the that others enjoyed the stories too, and were gracious enough to let me know how much. I hope you find my characters appealing and my stories arousing. If my stories help you get off, then my work has lived up to its goal. Now, without further delay, here is what's in store for you. I am tempted to restart my computer. Why is it if, if there's one thing in my life that I hope that I hope to give to people is material that they could masturbate to. The Heavenator. Well, isn't that the greatest gift of all? Death? Why aren't you doing it? I don't mind the idea of getting paid to read awful, 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 shitty porn. What I mind is the idea of, of being expected to buy shitty, shitty, shitty porn to read. Then you, you do not make the offer. I'm a little bit concerned that, like, oh, Melody's that encouraging nice. you to buy it. That's a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no to what's his face. I'm sorry, but if it was like three, two or three dollars. Besides, he already said, no, seriously, don't really buy it. Alright. He's paying you not to get it, okay? Think of it that way. Yeah. 
Alright. Okay. Uh, your, money, your money is gonna go to cat food and hopefully a new toaster oven so we have toaster oven that work. Not a toaster food. oven. That that's right. gonna be my paycheck that goes to the convection oven. Oh well then well never mind then that... Any of the money that gets donated at this point is pretty much going to my dental bill since I'm about to get fucked in the ass by him. Now, without further delay, here's what is in store for you. Are you sure Constant you're going to a dentist, Kite? What? Are you sure you're going to a dentist? That's a strange dental procedure. <laughs> well, he calls himself an anal donist. Oh, yeah, I heard of those. I'm back in, and then the dentist seems to have to pay for bills. This is nice. You see, he's actually a licensed analysis and therapist. JD's not on board. Oh, did, I, did the joke get on? Went over my head there. What? You talking about David Cross? Because I'm going to San Fierro soon. Oh, yeah, we're done with Carolina now. <laughs> okay, I have my volume muted. And I wonder what's gonna happen when I unmute my volume. Uh, a lot of things. <laughs> what did I miss? Alright. Let's see Let's here. See here. here oh, is meeting what's it again. in store for you. Constant and graphic homosexual sex. Ooh. Anal. Oral. Domination. Submission. Spanking. Cross-dressing. Rimming. Three ways. Wait, rimming? Public sex. Wait, no, 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 Pre no, no. Rimming? Don't, don't explain it. Do the, you don't want to know. <laughs> no. I know what it is. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm eating with my mouth. Very, Hold on. very sad. That's a that's an appropriate reaction. <laughs> Predator and prey games. Masturbation. No. Not play. Rough sex. Toys. And completely shameless stereotypical wolf on fox action. Uh... What the hell? Moving on. I'll tell you when you're older. By the way, Kite, you haven't seen uh, you haven't seen what I did to the truth yet. You're gonna love it. Brain to the shoot. A brain to the shoot. I'm dead. When I'm dead. <laughs> it may not exist when you're dead either. Yeah, and when I'm dead, I won't have to tell you what not play is. Why? Because we'll be burning in the fiery pit of hell? Well, you will be. Well, yeah, I'll be re I'll be reading Satan's God fanfiction in hell. <laughs> Come on, everybody, gather around. Let's listen to Kite's... Let's listen to Satan's bad fanfiction. Oh, you guy. <laughs> yeah, it's called Paradise Lost. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was my smart joke for the evening. Back to furry porn. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledgements. I'd just like to thank a few people who helped create this dread, oh, I'm sorry, not this dread, I'm starting to insert my own words in, this dead tree version, my stories, yes, this dead tree version, my stories, not even, oh, just version, my stories. Where's that? <laughs> Okay. Just reading this. Terran, uh, which kind of looks like it says Terran. If there's any romance in amongst all this porn, it's because of you. Thanks for being there for me. It's funny how often people mix up our stories, so for everyone reading this, buy my mate's book, The Hero 2. La Fonbeau. Thanks for working so hard on the magnificently gay cover. What's not funny? Email Lapon at Lapon underscore Beau at yahoo.com. Commission this artist. He's good and he's fast. Oh my god, that's what it is? Oh my god. What? She just not saw the cover. Thing. Okay, Kite, are you ready? I've got am, I, am I ready what? Check the stream. God. Check the stream, what? Look at the stream. Look 
what he did to the truth in San Andreas. Okay, okay. Back to the egg. Damn, man, there must be two tons of that stuff back there. Okay, let's see what Micah did to San Andreas. Drama. What's that noise? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, good, it's glitching out, so half his mouth is missing. Yep. Don't know why is your <laughs> beak broken backwards through your face? <laughs> because the cutscene models are fucked up. Donald, why did you send me a flamethrower? <laughs> Wait, no, no, CJ, please. I only hope Kaya can forgive us. Oh, my penis. All you had to do was sexy pumpkin dance, Donald. Donald's not very good at destroying evidence. I know how we'll hide our weed, our weed fields. We'll burn the weed, and no one will notice the giant weed cloud coming up from my farm. Of course not. Because he doesn't exist. Right, because okay, he I hope you guys could all hear me eating. Not over the furry fan fiction. Tack, you worked yourself to the bone. Finishing Ringtail Cafe number three in time for the deadline, but still, <laughs> I, I like to imagine like this like this old 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 newspaper printing service like you know like this old kind of newspaper studio. <laughs> it's like you know you just got printing machines everywhere. It's like, okay, come on, stop the presses, stop the presses. We got a new furry porn to write. Did I miss one? Why would you put Why would you put cannabis in the hoop house? That's like. You can afford so much better. Look at these scrubs. In time for the deadline, but still offered to help me with my book cover. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the time you put in to help me out. I know your eyes will be scarred if you ever read the stories in this book, but I hope you see this part at least. Please go to www.ringtailcafe.com to find out about the comic Tack writes with my friend Growly and his mate, Snowy. Keep an eye out for Fuzz's evil alter ego, Zuff. So are you done reading uh, that? Alex Vance. Thanks for using your mad design skills to lay out this book for printing and being so flexible in dealing with us to get this venture off the ground. Alex publishes furry books. Please, just no, I don't. <laughs> Alex, you heard it here. You heard it here. Alex, first. tell me about your furry furry books. What Alex furry books? I don't know what you're talking about. Furry books. <laughs> <laughs> He's burning them with a flame floor as we speak. They're Please printed on weed. <laughs> Please change the title of the stream to Alex Publishes Fur Furry Books. I am absolutely not going to do that. They publish furry books on weed. <laughs> Please visit baddogbooks.com and support more furry writings. How about no? Thanks to all my real life furry friends. If I tried to list you all, I'd forget someone, and I wouldn't want to do that. My time spent in the furry community has been wonderful because of all of you. I'd also like to thank all the furs out there who have read any of my stories and taken the time to email me or comment on Yifstar. How are there 22 people in the stream? I don't know. That number That's a steady number, though. Like, people haven't been leaving. Oh you, my god. They heard you publish furry books. Quick, someone spend ten dollars and change uh Miko's title. <laughs> I published oh Publishes furry books. On weed. <laughs> On weed. Where's the chopper? Where did where'd the chopper go? Oh there it is. You know that someone inside the stream chat is going to do that. <laughs> Who's the guy who spent forty dollars? Yeah, he'll drop ten on your name. Oh, and give me an avatar. I don't care what. I honestly don't care as long as I have an avatar. It turns <laughs> rum avatar. Rum rusher. Rum rusher says, "I wondered why his Skype avatar is meowed." <laughs> <laughs> That's because Mal's cool. 
Like, yeah, get the fuck look, out of he, here. He claims to be DJ Meowth, but I don't think that's what Meowth is doing there. <laughs> and he's he's dubstep. He's publishing furry books. <laughs> <laughs> he's recording the audiobook of the furry book. He's mixing up the audio. <laughs> <laughs> he's creating really bad Euro dubstep over the sounds of fairy animation. It's also being read by Stephen Fry, though, so that's a plus. I'd also like to thank all the furs out there who have read any of my stories and taken the time to email me or comment on Yifstar. All the positive feedback inspires me to keep writing. He gets positive feedback. You wrote a furry book? Oh my god, I'll masturbate to anything. I, wonder what I read them all, is. even if I don't always have time to reply. Don't stop emailing me. Your comments are always appreciated. Dear Fuzzwolf. Oh wait, no. What was his name? Fuzzwolf? Was it Fuzzwolf or was it... I, just call yeah, him I don't fucking know. Bye, Fuzzwolf. Dear Fuzzwolf. Please kill you yourself. <laughs> Dehumanize yourself and face to bloodshed. And last but not least, thank you to all the wonderful furries I've slept with. He's faking everyone he slept with. Okay, was this gay furry part right? Yes. Yes? yes? Yeah. Cause I was I had it muted the entire time. <laughs> yes, it was where furry books. <laughs> Am I going the right way? Nope. This is important. Oh, I, I misspelled his name. I need to know if the author is proud that he had sex with greasy fat men or greasy fat women. There we go. Horse Ebo. You misspelled my name, did you? Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who's and gang? Who's and gang? Who's and so Oozworm, uh, uh, you're uh, you're apparently a uh, a connoisseur of uh, furry books. books. Yes. Yes. I, I am the horse ebooks of furry books. Ooh. Good, excellent. The so horse you say furry books. Okay, horse furry books. Something. Uh, right? I, something. I literally something. made that. I literally made the pun one second before you did. Yes. <laughs> no. I, no. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. At last, but not least, thank you to all the wonderful furries I've slept with. Some of the tales in this book are based on real events that were just too hot not to commit to memory in some way. <laughs> oh boy. Furries having sex. Real tales of real furries. <laughs> real tales of... God. Tales. 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 Tales of tales. Tales. Yay. Tales. The Red Fur Diaries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sexual predator. The heat in the club was almost stifling. The music was too loud. And most of the furs here were a bit skanky. Ray <laughs> sighed and sipped his drink, surveying the crowd from the small back bar. The room was dominated by the stage in the center, where the fetish show staff was setting up for the next act. Most furs were dead. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Red for her diarrhea. Yeah. Oh, God. Most furs were dancing in typical goth fashion in front of the stage. But the guy is describing, is describing what is happening on stream right now. But the big wolf, but the big wolf was eyeing. God, was eyeing some of the wallflowers clustered off to the side. That was what he was looking for, one of the shyer types. In his experience, the shy ones were the best. Most of them pressed a great ocean of sexual energy waiting to explode, but were too unsure of themselves to really exploit that. That meant 
they were great for a passionate time and were less likely to be germ riddled than the more slutty types that were attractive and knew it. Now, what flavor was he in the mood for tonight? Rabbit? Cat? Or maybe a little... Ray smiled, sharp predatory teeth gleaming as he spied a likely candidate for some fun. On the other side of the stage, huddled in a dark spot by himself, was a fox. Focusing in on the fox, Ray took a deep sniff in the air. Through the haze of sweaty furry bodies, the fox's musk came through strong. The scent of male fox was unmistakable. Oh Foxes. god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Literally dying here. Foxes almost always smelled like pure sex, even if they were virgins. This is like yeah. <laughs> This is like Fifty Shades of Grey Fox. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he wanted to die. Oh yeah. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I know I was. snake. <laughs> Something about a fox always off the arousal of other furs, particularly the predator species, and this one was no different. The wolf watched the fox's movements from across the room for a while. He was a short male, no more than five and a half feet tall, perhaps a couple inches less. He was very fit looking, though. Not buffed out to grotesque proportions, but he definitely worked out. His perfectly toned chest and stomach could be seen nicely through his black mesh shirt. The black leather collar he wore stood out brightly against the white fur of his throat and matched his tight leather pants. The thing that caught Ray's wandering eye was the rather impressive and delicious looking lump in the fox's pants. Ray is like the <laughs> oh boy. For as much as I hate to interrupt, we're about to meet a new character that I model swapped. Is it a fox that has a impressive lump in his pants? No. I <laughs> hope. Oh, I guess I didn't do it for them. Okay. Uh, oh. Did you model? You're a bad person. Damn it. <laughs> Never mind. Ghetto, Jethro. You must kill him now. <laughs> I was expecting Trevor. What is this? <laughs> I'm behind. Oh wait, there it goes. Herbs. <laughs> there he is. He's clipping right through the roof. Isn't that Donald Duck though? Yes. Oh no, that is Donald. Yeah, that's Donald doing that. Jeez. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's do this. This um, is how I imagine a I'm car- I'm gonna play Mega Man 2. For a male of such small stature, the fox was obviously very well endowed. Pity he had that, i had been dragged here by a friend look about him. It was so typical of a fur as hot as this to not find himself attractive and feel out of place in a club like this. Ray decided he have to introduce himself. He began to make his way over when the little fox noticed him. Upon seeing the six-foot wolf who smelled of arousal heading in his direction, the shy fur got more than a little worried as to his intentions. He began to make his way toward the back door, slowly slipping between some of the bystanders who were now watching the black cat having candle wax poured on his nipples up on the stage. Ray grinned. The... Okay, I, I, I just want to say this uh, right now. Like, I, I don't think he's really thinking this through. Like, I understand that there are people in the BDSM scene that like candle wax as like a thing, but... Humans, also, like members of the BDSM crew, usually aren't completely covered in hair. Tight, tight, tight. The keyword. Are you telling me there's plot shit. holes in this furry porn? Tight, tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in saying that having candle wax poured X, all over your robot. Oh, there's Mega the Man. marker. <laughs> was created, Doctor Light created Mega Man. To Just stop saying, the having, evil like, desires of Doctor Wily. Poured on you if you had like. However, oh, after his thing. defeat, Doctor Wily created eight of his own robots to counter Mega Man. 
I know I replaced uh, David Cross with something though. So this hey, should hey. be interesting. I, I'm just saying, like, imagine if someone poured like hot wax on your head. Okay, Assuming the operative, David Cross. That would hurt. The like after work. after you get past the burning pain of the wax, because you know that that works. Imagine removing the wax. Right. All right. Uh, which robot master do I fight first? <laughs> One that begins with Gutsman. Which, which one has the most fur? Um, <laughs> none of these are fur. <laughs> I'm not even Mega sure which fur. game you're playing. Mega Man 2. Uh oh. Oh. Gutsman. Okay. Fight against okay. Mega Man, uh, Metal Man because I don't really want to try that hard. Bowl Some man. of the bystanders who are now watching a black cat having candle wax poured on his nipples up on the stage. Ugh. Ray, Ray grinned. The hunt was on. He pushed his way gently past the furs who were rapidly watching the stage, getting ever closer to his targets. Trevor Fox gasped as the yeah, I'm getting the metal blades. Blades. He hadn't expected it That's to be so broken. cool. Since he had been so used to the Infinite warmth ammo, of all the furry much. bodies inside the club, Sword he stepped steel. past he stepped past the three or four furs standing outside the back door to smoke, and quickly descended the small set of crumbling concrete steps to the ground. Fourth of your life. He didn't see the wolf at the door yet, and thought he may have lost him. Calming a little, he took a moment to look around the outside area of the club. The place was actually pretty amazing. The area was about the size of an average house's backyard. All the plants were completely overgrowing, and the cobblestone path was broken in places with grass growing through the cracks. Benches and sofas were scattered around, some with furry okay. bodies on them. <laughs> Either snuggling together, or passing something that wasn't tobacco between them. Okay, this is David Cross. <laughs> Crunk, oh yeah. <laughs> Alex making furry porn while hot. <laughs> this stream just got hot. <laughs> No, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you might want to you might want to check out the stream. I like how he just opens the door. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Excuse me. Oh god, what is that? That's Simba. It's Simba. <laughs> is that a Goomba? <laughs> no, it's Simba. From no, Rufox is alive again. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting there with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's for... <laughs> hey, it's like Saints Row 3 after all. <laughs> 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 oh god. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know what to think anymore. Rhythm's here to take care of your line. Walking fox creature. Oh god. I, I keep looking at the screen, I keep dying because of it. <laughs> I got a game over on Metal Man's stage. Thank you. Trevor wandered to what he hoped would be a quiet corner to sit for a bit and collect himself. He found a mostly intact and dry no, a a bench to sit on. He started to think he was overreacting. He had no idea if the wolf had seen... Uh, he had seen had meant him any harm or not. <laughs> he just wanted to talk or something. <laughs> <laughs> in the fucking broom. <laughs> he just comes out of his stomach. <laughs> the hit detection on these things is terrible. Dear <laughs> God. I can honestly say I wish you was here. Get, get in your game. <laughs> it is fucked up. You're right. Zoro. Get real. If I get real, I mean stay as high as long as you can. He started to think he was overreacting. He had no idea if the wolf he had seen had meant him any harm or not. 
Maybe he just wanted to talk or something. He was probably interested in me, and I blew it, he thought to himself. Upon reflection, when he wasn't scaring the hell out of him, the wolf hadn't been a bad looker, and those eyes had really caught his attention. It almost glowed with a beautiful shade of green. Trevor smiled as he thought about it. He was becoming more relaxed now. The woodsy smell of the overgrowing plants and trees around him probably helped that. If he closed his eyes, he could imagine he was in a forest somewhere, back in the wild. Gotcha. A husky voice broke Trevor's train of thought as he felt strong paws grip his upper arms. Trevor gasped. The wolf had found him after all. He hadn't been able to smell him with the strong smells of the undergrowth and all around him. The wolf had stayed downwind and snuck around behind him. He whimpered a little as the wolf's large paws roamed over his body, caressing his chest and belly. Ray sat down around Trevor, holding the fox securely between his legs. You know what happens to foxes who get caught by wolves? Ray rasped into the fox's trembling ear. Oh boy. Trevor only whimpered in response, afraid for his life again. They get eaten, the wolf replied to his own question as he quickly brought his muzzle down on Trevor's neck, giving him a sharp nip. And then he breaks his neck and takes him back to the rest of the wolf pack. Trevor <laughs> tried to jump, but he was held fast in Ray's arms. The small fox weakly tried to struggle. He trembled. He knew what the wolf wanted. He looked down to see the wolf's legs were bare. Off to the side, he could see a small pile of clothes laying next to a nearby tree. Wait, he that didn't notice that? He felt <laughs> This is terrifying. It is. Isn't it though? He felt pressing into him was. <laughs> I can't die to me a metal man. He's like super easy. Come down. Stop distracting <laughs> Please me. Please let me go. He squeaked. Now, now, you don't dress like this. Ray's left paw slid down Trevor's tight leather pants to squeeze the bulge of his fox hood. If you only <laughs> want the wallflower instead of the right. bone. Hey, hey, that's not right. Just now you can I'm do the valet hey, uh, side quest. Just because I'm dressed like a cave furry doesn't mean I am. <laughs> Ray continued to rub up and down on the hardening lump at Trevor's crotch. Involuntarily, Trevor's legs parted just enough to allow Ray to reach between his thighs and give a gentle squeeze where his balls were. Trevor oh, whimpered. boy. <laughs> where they were. <laughs> Feels to me at least one part of you likes all this attention, Ray rubbed a bit more vigorously now. His paw heated up as it rubbed against the leather. You could feel the fox hood stirring beneath, feeling like it needed to be released. I'll let you go anytime you want, but I know you want this. Ray gave the lump a firm squeeze. Oh, oh gods. Trevor gasped, unable to control himself any longer. His raging hormones were making his blood boil, and he couldn't deny his own nature any longer. He was a fox, and he was made to fuck. He He moaned as he was, he was made to fuck. His cock ached he to be released fox. from the tight prison of his pants. Yeah, yes, he squeaked. And that was all that needed to be said. While holding Trevor firmly with his left paw, Ray reached between them to undo the catch above Trevor's tail. He switched paws to undo the lacings along the front of the fox's pants. Trevor wriggle, uh, wiggled a bit as Ray helped his pants to slip off. Ray looked and grinned as he noticed Trevor wore no underwear. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I am at the valet carport. JD was out. Wait, JD? No. JD, no. Oh. Is, it, is it over? No. I, I, could, nope. I couldn't. I couldn't take it. I could. No, but you're in the story now. I could have been a contender. <laughs> you really did want this tonight. Wait, no. You really did want this tonight, didn't you, Naughty Fox? He said, <laughs> taking a firm hold of Trevor's dripping erection. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my. Yes. In response, 
Ray continued to stroke the foxhood firmly in long and slow strokes. He looked in amazement at the fox's endowment. He didn't... Did this guy just, like, type dick a whole bunch and then, like, go through and find replacement with various thesaurus words? Probably. Yes. He didn't want to admit it, but if not for his knot, it would be bigger than his own. It was already thicker, but the fox didn't need to know that. No, lift your tail for me, fox! Wait, is his dick tied in a knot? Ray commanded, yes. fully in control. Oh. Okay. He's like Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Avant-garde multimedia livestream experience. <laughs> Trevor, okay, so now I'm in a there's a problem with this call. Today, Hold on. And monkeys are terrible, and these birds are terrible. <laughs> it's okay though, because Metal Blade is OP. But everything is terrible. Trevor obeyed, hesitating just a bit as he lifted his bushy tail, leaving his tail hole vulnerable and exposed. Oh. His rational mind screamed mm. at him from submitting so completely to a stranger. It also reminded him that, out here, they didn't have any kind of lubricant. And he had no idea how big this wolf was, but his other side, his instincts, kicked in and he knew he really, really needed this. He looked across the yard to see a dozen eyes watching him as the wolf slowly lifted his body. Some watched from the corners of their eyes as they went down on each other, and at least one or two were watching him intently as they passed a joint between them while pawing themselves off. I'm about to- uh, I'm about to get fucked. This is like, terrifying. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> this is- that's literally the only word I have for this. Just terrifying. I'm about to get fucked in public, was Trevor's last thought before he felt the wolf's hard cock head against his pucker. Oh, <laughs> boy. You can buy a lot of things off of Amazon. Ray pulled the fox down, groaning as he felt the familiar tight warmth of a tail hole gripping his cock. Trevor's mouth opened in pain, but no sound came out as the wolf cock lubed with only oh, a man, drop or two of free gum, opened him up ah, and penetrated his insides. The wolf didn't wait for the pain to subside before he began moving Back Trevor up down on his lap, allowing his wolf hood to pump in furries. to pump in and out of Trevor's twitching hole. End of this sample Kindle book. Enjoyed the preview. Thank God. <laughs> that was the sample? That was the sample. What happens? Yeah. What happens? Jesus. Fucking hell. What, oh, what happens to Travis's puckering hole? I have to know. <laughs> Oozworm, if you want to know, you can gift me the book. No. You could also buy it for yourself. It's only ten dollars. <laughs> Get Amazon Prime and read every single bad erotica story. Alright, so I read that for 40 bucks. <laughs> Good job. Yep. Well earned. Well, well earned. I can't lie. If you, like, got a consistent $40 for each, you know, sample read, you'd be a rich man. Um. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know if someone like. Were there any other funny thing? Like, who was the one that linked you to Trevor's tricks, Myko? My roommate. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh. <laughs> Is your roommate an actual furry? Maybe. Uh, d does your roommate know of any other terrible, terrible books in the same vein as Trevor's tricks? Uh, Fighter Knuckle linked uh, Jesus goes to space. <laughs> Probably none that you couldn't find just by like looking at the related items. Heavenator found something on fanfiction.net to for you to read apparently. You know what? No one paid me forty bucks to read Waluigi's Taco Stand. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome That's to Santa right. Taco, the safe, clean taco. <laughs> hey, homie. What the fuck is going on? Well, what? Those assholes keep saying shit to me. What the fuck is going on? Do I look like a hooker to you? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, it looked like a hooker to me. <laughs> oh, God. In certain circles, you maybe. Mm. Kill yourself. <laughs> oh, my God.
god, these freaking roosters. Freaking roosters. Oh god. For $15, I'll read that, Heavenator. <laughs> oh. No, this this has to fall <coughs> under the 40. He's already... Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll read this because it did fall under the 40 and honestly, yeah. What is... Uh... Okay. <laughs> okay, good. There's only two bits. Okay. The Furry Only Bible, author, Gay Furry. It's the Holy Bible, but Author, written. Gay Furry. <laughs> author, <laughs> Gay Furry. <laughs> well, at least Description. we know right this uh... Oh, wait, no. Rating. Fiction, M. Parody, Fantasy. Chapters, 2. Reviews, 7. Faves, 7. You have to read the reviews. It's the Holy Bible, but rewritten as self-insertion furry slash fiction. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't... Two chapters. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, yeah, the Old Testament and the New Testament. <laughs> My name is of Jamie, course. and I'm a horny oryx. I was wandering around the Garden of Eden one bright and beautiful morning. I looked around at all the other beautiful animals, seeing a sexy young impala who made my oryx balls fill with a hot, steamy desire to discharge. But what really, that impala oryx? was nothing. I was looking for Adam. The Adam. Bible in first person view. He's a stallion. A powerful, muscular stallion. Every time I see him, I just want to thrust my oryx cock into his stallion ass so bad. I imagine his big, bushy tail whipping around my stomach as I thrust it in and out of him repeatedly. There he is. Oh, Adam, my love. Look at your big, powerful shoulders, your long, distinguished snout, and your enormous, slurping tongue. You are truly the most dignified creature in the entire garden. All creatures, great and small, bow down to you. You and your rippled muscular legs. But what is this? It's that foxy bitch, Eve. That's why you're not paying attention to me. I watch your tongue caress her long furry snout. Orange hairs collecting the saliva on, your, on the entire garden. Oh my god. <laughs> bitch. On your tongue. Why is it you love that conniving, devious temptress when I would be forever yours? You're forever kissing. Long. Your massive stallion tongue is filling her snout, bulging out from under mm. her fangs. She's so tiny compared to you. I've got to do something. I can't let this continue. Hey there, sexy. Adam. Hello. I say, wandering up to the stallion and fox locked in a passionate kiss. Piss off, you fucking wanker. Screams Adam, kicking me in the face with his rear hoof. I go tumbling down the path. As the pain sets in while the blood begins trickling down freshly opened wounds, I can't help but feel aroused. Noticing that Adam was oh now consumed. Oh my god. <laughs> Noticing that Adam was now consumed by his passionate lovemaking session with Eve, I mount him as best as I can, stressing my forelimbs as, far, uh, as hard as possible to get as high as I possibly can. I begin rubbing my erect cock on Adam's body, repeatedly catching the flap of skin between his rear leg and the rest of his body, and feeling the lovely tingling sensation God. of my dickhead caressing his sock. As I thrust a few more times, I feel my erect cock briefly touch his. I'm flung to the side with incredible force, crushing into a pine tree behind me as the needles stick into my skin painfully. I can't help but feel further aroused. My vision comes from a red oh, blur God. back wait, into focus, wait. and I see Adam's angry nostrils snorting at me hard. He begins beating me with his front hooves, neighing loudly. What the fuck did you have to go and do that for, eh? He asks. <laughs> Jake, you know, Is it really? Got it. I'd rather be the guy getting buried alive in cement right now than keep listening to this. Taking a hoof across my face and opening up a long bloody gash. You should read the works of Edgar Allan Poe. He briefly yeah. relents, apparently waiting for an answer. I sit there quietly as the blood accumulates, dripping down the front of my mouth. As a droplet slips across my lips, I start licking it up with my tongue. Mmm, my own blood. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, uh, delicious. What can I say, Adam? I begin. Pausing to lick up a bit more of my blood. My cock's not going to blow its load until I hump you, silly. Adam snorts loudly, turning around to jam his ass into my face. 
As he lifts his tail up, I catch sight of his big bulging testicles and long erect dick. However, I can't pay any attention to them that long as soon as my entire body is covered with shit. Adam's shit. As I began panicking at the pungent odor and the realization that I'm covered with shit, I feel two hooves slam into my body, one in my face and one in the chest. The force is enough to completely knock the wind out of me while simultaneously dazing me, and I quickly slip into an unconsciousness. The fuck was that? It's, it's the soundtrack to the furry pile. Oh, of course. It sounds like a six-year-old practicing the piano. <laughs> I wake up with the stinging pain of shit smeared all over my festering sores. Note to self, cease further advances on Adam. Yeah, I'm in a lot of pain here. I begin working about the infection. I should probably go find a river to watch myself off in. Just got to stand up first. Yeah, ow, seriously, ow. I notice the elbow joint on my front leg appears to have exposed bone, and it's covered in shit. Jesus, Adam sure fucked me up good. I can't get... I can't get up. I may as well just lie here, covered in shit, and die. Oh look, it's Eve. What the fuck is that stupid fuck? Get out of here. Oh my goodness, look at what Adam has done to you, she, ex she exclaims. Fuck off, you skanky little trollop, I groan. Now there, she coos, don't be such a little cunt. Let me help you. She crawls underneath my body, pushing up as hard as she can. Yeah, like that's going to get anything done, you stupid shit. I weigh like probably around ten times what you weigh. I vainly try to stand, only to collapse on top of her. She howls and yelps until eventually I manage to roll over, unpinning her. You piece of shit, she screamed. How could you do that? I was trying to help you. It's your own damn fault, I snort. That was your stupid idea, not mine. She growls at me, which I'd normally find pretty pathetic, but I just got the shit beaten out of me and can't really defend myself right now. And to think I felt sorry for you, she snaps. I'm gonna go get Adam to come finish the job. My only consolation is she looks ridiculous covered in shit. Shit she rubbed off of me. Fuck, I must look ridiculous covered in shit too. I see her scamper off into the garden. The pain overwhelms me to the point that I lie down closing my eyes until endorphins neutralize the pain enough for me to be able to pass out. I awaken with a hoof to the ribs. Oh, hi there, Adam. Did you cover my Eve in shit? Adam asks, snorting in a manner quite scary to a bloody broken shit covered orc. Um, no, I respond. It always worked for Beavis and Butthead, right? Apparently you missed my message the <laughs> first time. How do they know what Beavis what? and Butthead is? What is this? It seems like you got a wee <laughs> bit of learning. God is it all knowing. It seems like you got a wee bit of learning to do still. I feel Adam slip his hot, engaged phallus into my asshole. Instant ecstasy shoots through my body. Numbing my painful shit covered sores. He begins <laughs> harder and harder. I feel my sphincter and colon stretching in a pleasurably stinging manner. His uh... dick rubs against my prostate, and I feel fluid beginning to leak out of my cock. Suddenly he pulls out. And let that be a lesson to ya, he shouts, running off into the garden. Eve is standing there. She has a perplexed look on her face. I wanted him to kill you, she intones. Instead, he ass rapes you. You probably got off on that shit, didn't you? Of course, I respond proudly, or at least as proudly as I can while covered in shit. I'm a horny oryx, after all. Those big bulging balls of yours, she asks. Is that what's making you misbehave? No, of course not, I scream with fear. Look at them, how pathetic, she says, nuzzling her snout against my underside so as to expose my balls. How would you feel if I chewed them off? You evil bitch, I scream. Evil, she asks. What is evil? You know, I say, evil. Things like chewing people's balls off. I still don't understand. Can you explain more? She questions. Oh, right. I say, you haven't eaten from the tree. Tree? She asks. What tree? Why, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The I tree say, of the knowledge. The tree of the knowledge. Duh. Knowledge. Eat some fruit, and all will become clear. Eve rears up on her hind legs and snags a low-hanging ass. Oh. After munching on it for a bit, her eyes fill with a scary passion. She spontaneously drops the apple out of her mouth and snaps her jaws around my balls. Pain of her fangs slicing through my testicles completely overwhelms all of their senses in my what? body. My hearing ceases and my vision goes bright white. The only sensation left in my body is the feeling of my dick going rock hard. I sit in utter agony for a few moments before the pain once again overtakes me and I pass out yet again. 
I awaken in a dusty wasteland surrounding the Garden of Eden. Its tall hedges loom in the skyline, an impenetrable barrier protecting the garden from re from reentry. I look around, confused. How did I get out here? And why? I'm surrounded by dozens of other animals, all former denizens of the garden. I see Adam and Eve, well, sobbing and reeling in shame. The sexy young Impala is nudging me, asking if I'm all right. I manage to creak onto my knees, my legs crying out in pain. What the fuck just happened? I ask. God showed up, said the Impala. No, mm, the lion God God damn it. said Adam and Eve were forbidden to eat apples because they're evil, and that some agent of evil gave Eve an apple, and, well, things fell apart from there. Rumor has it it was some snake. <laughs> we're all gonna form a brute squad later and beat the shit out of that fucking snake. What? <laughs> hey, fucking Yoshi. Rum, <laughs> Rum, <laughs> Rum, Rum Rusher is right. CJ, this is the worst radio station ever. <laughs> so, uh, where were you? Where were you trying to take the Silver Surfer there? <laughs> I thought it was Slender Man. I couldn't tell. Slender Bone, um, actually. Slender There's a difference. Man. That's right. Slender oh, yeah, Bone. Totally. I saw a snake give her the apple, for sure. Hey, look, screamed the Impala. It's the snake. Get him. A rhino, a tiger, an ocelot, and the impala all go charging after the snake. It's not me, the snake hissed. You idiot, shouted Eve. It wasn't the snake, it was that fucking shit-covered oryx over there. Oh, fuck. Get him! The absolute terror of hearing for my life is suddenly assuaged as I feel a rhino's cock slide up my ass. The tiger sticks his dick in my mouth, the ocelot climbs under me and starts... God. And starts sucking on my balls. The impala starts sucking on my cock. Oh, I love you guys, I say to them as we sink into a beautiful furry orgy. Chapter what? 1. No. Chapter 2. Noah's Ark. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <clears throat> A.K.A. the love boat. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jamie, and I'm a horny oryx. One bright and beautiful morning, I was wandering around the desert, Message looking for something Dr. to drink. Light. I looked around at all the other beautiful animals, seeing a sexy young camel who made my orange bowl <laughs> filled with a hot, steamy desire to discharge. But really, a camel was nothing. I was looking for Noah. Noah is a strong, noble goat with a rippled physique and his balls the size of walnuts. Yesterday, I was wandering around looking for something to rub my dick on. I saw him and instantly got hard. His throbbing muscles pulsated as he walked towards me, flashing a sexy grin and looked in rather slyly. I think it was, uh, Crash Man. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, no, I'm out. I got... Hey there, Jamie, he said. I got someone to up beat like <laughs> Sure you do. Hey there, Jamie, he said, playing it up like Troy McClure. I'm having a party on my yacht tomorrow. A swingers. A Troy McClure reference? <clears throat> I love swinging, I exclaimed. My fantasy is to lie there, going back and forth as a hundred guys pound me up the ass. I mean, I already have the gift. Well, great then, smiled Noah. We're certainly looking for gifted individuals for this party. Just be sure to bring a female companion. Well... What? Did I lose the call? Yeah, I lost the call. It was a sign. There is no escape. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Even the Skype you call rebelled. Is, said Noah, don't you? Isn't it when you lie in a harness that swings back and forth with your ass Did cheeks spread for stop? easy penetration and a bunch of guys get in line and pound you up the ass one by one? Oh, Jesus Christ, no, groaned Noah, <laughs> reeling off to the side and covering his mouth with his forelimb. The idea of Noah saying Jesus Christ makes me laugh. Jesus Christ, no, is pretty <laughs> accurate to what's going on right now. Reeling off to the side and covering his mouth with his, with his forelimb as if he were about to take a hurl. It's a wife-swapping party. Aw, I moaned. Well, I'm gay, so I don't have a wife. Can I come anyway? Nope. Snapped Noah. Sorry. That's nope. That's the one rule. You have to bring a wife, girlfriend, female friend, or acquaintance of the opposite gender. Or perhaps if you really want to, you can bring a tranny. At least there's some demand for that sort of thing. Just don't show up alone. Right, I shouted with glee. Well, see you there. Yep, remember, don't come alone. 
I arrived at the party dressed in drag per Noah's instructions. His yacht sucks. The entire thing is up on the blocks and not even out floating on the ocean. What the hell was this guy thinking? The whole thing looks as if he built it himself. It's ugly misshapen and looks like if he ever tried to put it out on the ocean it would sink. And look at that massive gangway all the way up to the deck. If I were designing that thing, I'd just put some gigantic doors in the side. I mean, that's how I've always seen Noah's Ark depicted. Not just as if the thing needs to float, it's a giant boat out in the middle of the desert. The line to get into this place is huge, and people are staring at me. There's a nice pig couple behind me, and all they do is sit there and squeal. They're laughing at me, I'm sure of it. I keep trying to sneak a glance at them, but every time they catch me doing it, they just start squealing again. I swear, if they don't stop that shit, I'm going to be feasting on bacon. Slowly, we trudge up the ramp, only to stop again with my two mortal enemies laughing behind my back. At least the marmoset couple in front of me seems nice, or perhaps they're just happy I haven't cr crushed one of them yet. The pigs are at it again. What the hell do they find so funny? I turn around to face them only to find a pair of passenger pigeons standing behind the pigs laughing at me as well. I'm furious. Why am I the subject of ridicule? Is it because I came alone? I near the front of the line. There's Noah. He sees me. Oh, my. He doesn't look happy. Jamie! He screams. Seriously, what the fuck did I tell you? Don't come alone. I came as a tranny, I explained. I thought you didn't want to upset the ratio. Seriously, fella, says Noah. You call yourself a tranny with your oversized novelty genitalia? That's normal for an oryx, I continue to explain. No, seriously, it's not, says Noah. Guy, I know what an oryx cock looks like. That's not it. Perhaps you're familiar with human genitalia. Well, that's what you're sporting. And take it from me, no human has a cock that large. And you're trying to call yourself Are a you tranny me? because you've stretched a pair of panties around a min around a minute fraction of its surface area? Seriously, guy? You should get yourself checked out. I feel disturbed by Noah's ignorance. My entire party vibe has been crushed. Okay, I say, I'll go. Finally, squealed one of the pigs behind me. I trudge off to the side of the gangway. I feel rejected, yet strangely aroused. I stare into the entrance longingly, watching as Noah admits the pigs into the party. Nobody wants me, but my dick is ripping through my undersized panties as it throbs for some action. The line behind me shoves forward, blocking my entire view of the entrance and Noah's view of me. Hmm. I devise a cunning plan. Everyone is staring at the doorway, and to the left is a small window I could jump to. Too bad there's no way I could make that jump as an oryx. If only I were an orangutan. But I'm entirely in control here. I decide to stop being an oryx. Now I'm an orangutan. I leap off the what? ground and reach out with incredibly long arms, <laughs> snacking the ledge and swinging myself up onto it. I slip my feet off the window sill and find myself amidst a large crowd of diverse animals who are all standing around making chit chat. Well, that was easy. Now I'm an oryx again. I wander into the party and begin to mingle. An oryx? shouts a loud fattened hippo above the boisterous ambient noise. You don't say! Actually, I say cunningly, I didn't say. You certainly know your obscure African antelope species. You sure are pretty, says the hippo before perching a mug on his lower lip and dumping the contents into his mighty mouth, most of the most of which manages to go down his throat. He glances on me with a glazed, booze-ridden look before asking, Are you sure you're really a lady? Ah, oh, sweetie, I say, walking up to him to nuzzle my neck against his jaw and tusks. Of course I'm a lady. Well, all right then, he says. Let's fuck. We wander about the bar area of the yacht into one of the many private stalls. I begin pulling up my skirt. That sure is one misshapen vagina you have there, says the hippo. It almost looks like wow. a Wow. <laughs> That's my clitoris, Aiku. Oh, screams the hippo. Then it shouldn't be hard to find. Thunder cracks outside and flashes down the hallway. The hippo rips one of the shreds of panties I have remaining, exposing my large, erect, human-shaped penis. Hippo lips surround my cock as I feel his tongue bouncing my dick between his tusks. Wow. Harry Hippo, shouted the silhouette of a goat-shaped figure. What the hell do you think you're doing? Before I know what's happening, the hippo's lips are pried away from my dick, his teeth accidentally nipping the tip. The pain arouses me and I spooge a small amount of pre-ejaculatory fluid. Harry Hippo, shouts the shadowy figure again. Seriously, what were you doing? Harry Hippo stares up and... God. Good God. Stares up into the light with a confused, drunken glare. He squints his eyes and rubs his chin, and then remarks, 
I was making love to this beautiful lady. This? Shouts Noah. This is what you call a lady? She said she was a lady, remarked the hippo. Noah shoved aside the drunken hippo and came storming up to me. Do you have any fucking clue what's going on? He asked me. No, I remarked. Look outside the fucking window, Noah said, pointing down the hallway. I look and see a torrential rain pouring into an ocean as far as the eye can see. Wait, what? Ocean? I thought we were in the middle of the desert. We're on a mission from God, says Noah, with a newly found crazy look in his eye. I didn't want couples here for a swingers party. I wanted them here to repopulate the earth. Oh, really? I remarked. Then why were you fine with me bringing a tranny here? Oh, for the love of God, shut up and stop fucking with the plot progression, says Noah. We're gonna be stuck here together for the next 40 days and 40 nights. <clears throat> Kinda like Lent, I ask? What the fuck? Remarks Noah. No, nothing like Lent. Shut up, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see Noah finally likes my cock in his ass. Oh, Jamie, he groans. Oh, Jamie, I feel a warm tingling sensation in my balls. I can't hold it back anymore. Jamie, shouts Noah. Don't come alone. Too late, I scream as the floodgates open, pumping pints, pints of spooge into Noah's rectum. I sigh with relief. Pulling it out, I begin to move to the side, but Noah turns around and starts licking the residual jizz off my cock. Your cum tastes so good, Jamie, so good. So what's the situation with the big group orgy, I ask? I mean, that's how this has to end. Oh, it's looking great, Jamie. It's on the books for tonight. It's in eight hours. You just have to find something to do until then. I proceed to masturbate for the next eight hours. <laughs> it's time for the orgy. Woohoo, I love big gay furry or orgies. The ferret fucks the newt as the porcupine jizzes into the dingo's mouth. The shrew is taking a shit down the muskrat's throat as the spring box springs up and down the jaguar's rectum. The parakeet rims the bear as the bear sucks off the heart beast. The hamster and the gerbil go at it in 69 while the jackal frenches the finch. The elephant has her way with the mandrel. The roebuck rages his way up the kinkajou's pooper as the chinchilla licks the genitals of a koala. The woodchuck chuck chucks, the woodchuck chick chucks her jaws around the vicuna's balls as the puma pounces playfully on the pronghorn. The jiroba jives cheerfully in response to seeing a salamander sex up a seal. The ram rages raggedly in a response to the hyenas humping the hog. An alpaca ass raping an armadillo angers the chameleon cock sucking a cougar. The newt nesting with a mongoose maidens a mare molesting a gazelle. A pensive platypus weeps at the sight of a pig pillaging the ass of an alligator. Ah, where Noah appears, he has a present for me. A swing! He hangs it from the ceiling and throws myself into it. Noah and the hippo begin strapping my legs to the sides of the walls as I lay back my, with my asshole exposed for easy penetration. A line quickly materializes. I see dozens of beautiful fur-covered bodies with erect, throbbing cocks ready to pillage my rectum. Hmm, ass piracy. Now this is what I call a swingers party. L-U-L-Z. I love you guys, I say to them as we sing a beautiful furry orgy. The end. I hate How are there still 21 people watching this? I don't know. It's immensely entertaining, clearly. Reviews. Okay, guest number one said, what the actual fuck? The archaic minister responded with, white people. <laughs> That's a good response. <laughs> what? what? What did I just what? miss? I just took out my earplugs. <laughs> sure you did. I have a question. What's up? Why? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because I was paid forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough reason for me. I'm cheap. <laughs> Internet jar. famous furry. Alex, I, you didn't. You never told me you were wrote such great furry fiction. I don't. No, he doesn't write it. He just publishes it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you were so supportive of the furry community. How much money do you get from them? Zero. I do it Down all for service. free. <laughs> Out of the kindness of his heart. Don't do that. Wait, now you've done it. What is it? What is it? Have... Alright, Kai, I think you fulfilled the $40. Now you have to ask for more money. And give me a game on Steam. 
Okay, there. I updated it. I don't need a game on Steam. I'm, I, I don't mind, like, just having the money. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, what I've been trying to say this entire time is buy me a game. I would stop fish, but I'm poor. You have forty dollars. Yeah, that's it, forty dollars. Already... Go to my dental bill. Um, this is okay. the kite memorial fun. Come on. <laughs> kite memorial danger zone. Kite died as he lived. Reading furry fan fiction out loud for the internet. <laughs> Guess what's gonna be on his gravestone? The entire transcripts of that book. Yep. <laughs> it, it'll just say first day kite, but first will be spelled F U R S T. Oh no. Oh yeah. Damn it. Yeah, I can't. I can't draw fan art from for this. this one. I, I will draw something. No, wait. You don't do. You keep your hands down. Don't do anything. Me? Put don't your hands where I can art. see them. <laughs> don't draw no fan art for this. They're Not yet. on the controller. <laughs> this is pretty great, though. I need to draw fan art. You're drawing fan art, Mario Paint. You can't trick me. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. That's that's not how you get a job in the How do I kill this guy? <laughs> oh, kill that's this guy. not how you car. No! <laughs> In case anyone's wondering, I've discovered that Open Broadcaster Software has this weird text limit for text. Oh, okay. Like a character limit that's like 32 characters. It's very odd. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna draw something. Fire up my MS Paint. Now here's the true test of its metal. Can it hand handle a uh, UTF? All those, all those fancy nope. symbols. Mm. No, it can't. Okay, let's draw something. Let's be artists. Let's not. <laughs> never, never make art. Let's not and say we. Making some art right now. Art is forbidden. Nope, it's gonna be great. Art is forbidden. You're, you're opening a box. You don't want to open that box. That box is, is terrible. Or is box. in that box. Open that box so you may shoot yourself with them. The box was welded shut for a reason. Money to give you, I would have given, given you it for you to read gay witchcraft. <laughs> um, Serg already did that. Yes, I know. <laughs> Wait, Serg already what? 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 Read gay witchcraft <laughs> on a stream. <laughs> what is it? Witchcraft for gay people, I guess. <laughs> like, is it like a a fanfic, or is it like an actual book or something? No, it's, it's like... He was doing spells and Coinbox was getting really mad at him. <laughs> well, yeah, but isn't Zerg actually kind of like batshit crazy? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. uh... <laughs> this, was, this was before the whole memory thing, though. Yeah. I think Kite's crazy, too. I am crazy. Crazy like a fuck now. Oh, oh you're like a fox, alright. We all know okay. what foxes are good for. Save <laughs> my desktop called Kite. Okay, and I'm gonna upload this to image upload this to Imager. Fuck the police! 
spider knuckles. I will read that for... Actually, how, how much is this? Okay. Eh, this isn't too long. You know what, I'll read it. Think, think like, about if it's under a page, If it's under, like, a couple pages, I'll read it. But, like, if it's, like, a huge preview of, like, some kind of big erotic fanfic, I will totally read it for money. Upload computer, if that's good. First aid kaitsune. <laughs> okay, I'm posting something. My persona is a closet. That reminds oh, me of this. Yeah, this reminds me of this guy uh, who uh, lives so in Pittsburgh. Who uh, he's a furry, and his persona is a glass statue of a fox. That can change his. <laughs> what? That's so if retarded. Your, if your persona is a closet, does that mean most of the furries come out of you? No. I I I did something. Look at it. <laughs> I do not want to know what you. He shot me in the head. Okay, I see the I see me getting shot. I see the kite. I see the gun. What is the other thing? <laughs> what is the other thing? Kite of the gun. What is that other thing? Oh, that's an arrow pointing to the gun. It's oh. not an arrow. That's like. A J with a hyphen coming out of it. <laughs> it's a J with a hyphen coming out of it. That's my persona. Oh god. The hyphen don't be silent. It's called J hyphen. J hyphen. J hyphen. God. It's a new uh, musical uh, movement coming out of Japan. J Jesus goes to space. Shit, why am I in space? Jesus. <laughs> 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 That's a good opener. I'm, I'm booked. <laughs> Jesus goes to space. Set in modern day. This tells the story of Jesus, who ends up going into space by accident. God's fault. There he meets the Star Trek crew, and they go. What? And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it already. Shit, why am I in space? Jesus wondered, slowly revolving in the black abyss of blackness and wondering what the fuck he was doing in such an absurd location. Where is Earth? He tried to recall the last thing he had been doing before being catapulted into the black void like a space monkey, but conveniently couldn't remember. Shit, son, I'm sorry, there was a booming voice. Huh, said Jesus. I meant to beam you up to heaven, but I think I catapulted you too far, said God. No shit, Sherlock, I'm in the middle of fucking nothing. I'm sorry, son, I'll figure this out soon somehow. I oh my god, Shadow the Hedgehog. But aren't. It's not very often I get to use my beaming skills. See, I prefer to send most people hurtling to hell. Aren't you omnipotent, omniscient, omnibus, and omnipresent? Come on, man. Just teleport me back to your place. Sorry, dude. I only have powers over Earth. Fuck that. Jeez. There was silence as Jesus considered his current predicament. Floating in literal nothingness, he gradually floated leftwards, although there really wasn't really a left as he was rolling all over the fucking place, and bashed his head against a star. Fuck that hurt, Jesus patted his head, and his hair burst into flames. Shit, shit, shit. And then the laws <laughs> of physics remembered that there was no oxygen in space, and so the fire subsued, uh, subdued to a low crackle. So, am I stuck here? I'm sorry, BB. I'll... <laughs> I'm sorry, BB. I'll figure something out, out, bye, for now. My pizza is here. You fucking... Jesus began. His words began to cut off as a gigantic spaceship collided with his face. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Shit, what the fuck? A guy with pointy ears and a terrible bowl cut stuck his head out the window. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck are you doing in my way? He frantically hit the windshield wipers button in an attempt to gently brush off the slightly 2D Jesus. Jesus was slammed and crushed by the gigantic angry wipers. He fell off the bonnet. Hey, can I come in? He asked, brushing down his robes. Why? asked the man with road rage and a bowl cut. Jesus was about to answer when he noticed that his floaty robes was now floating around his head. While the breezy robe had been beneficial in Holy Crib, it apparently wasn't too good for space wear. His flip-flops were also merrily waving goodbye as they hurtled off at dangerous velocities in opposite directions, and his beard was also defying gravity. And slapping him in the face. I'm bored and this sucks, Jesus said bluntly. <laughs> okay, said the man no, with the spandex blue lot. suit and the bowl cut, rolling down the window further. Float on in. Three hours later, Jesus had finally managed to navigate his way into the window. After floating off in the opposite direction approximately 300 times and almost entering orbit of two neighboring planets multiple times, eventually he found out 
that the breaststroke was the most efficient method of moving. After these many close shaves with death, he was grateful to eventually get inside the obviously cardboard spaceship. The man with the terrible bowl cut wound the window shut and gravity returned to normal by Earth's standards, and Jesus banged his head against the floor, his robe finally obeying and returning to its proper, much more dignified position. Son, did I never tell you not to get into cars with strangers? A booming voice resounded. Shut up, okay? Spaceships donut. Spaceships donut count. Donut count. <laughs> donut count. That's what it says. Donut count. All right. Oh, Plus, you're an ass and got me stuck here in the first place. So there was no way I was just gonna float around there all day. Jesus tantrumed, folding his arms over his chest. When you get back here, you are totally grounded. So, what's your name? Asked the rebellious Jesus, looking at the man with the bull cut. Spud, like the potato. What about you? Jesus, I'm son of God, you know. Jesus puffed his chest out. Sure you are, Spud snorted, combing his bull cut into proper order. Do you know how to drive this thing? No. Isn't that your job? Jesus asked, baffled. I actually stole this. I usually hit random buttons and it works. He strolled over to the control panel and there was a dramatic camera panning of his face as he randomly hammered the controls. The spaceship lurched, kangarooed, and stalled. Fuck. He kicked the control panel and it spluttered back into life. Fucking clutch, I need an automatic. He steered away from the curb and narrowly avoided being stuck, uh, sucked into a black hole as he angrily blasted through the stars. Where are we going? asked Jesus, petting his pet unicorn. I'm going to reach the end of this blackness. Huh? Basic logic is basic. Everything has an end. Therefore, space has an end. If you keep going in one direction, then it must end. Everything started from something, so there can't be nothing, so there must be an end. Okay, okay. Are we there yet, asked Jesus Board? No, fuck off. Footnote. Always I want to be with you, make believe with you, and live in harmony, harmony. The end. The end? The end. The end. So when did the Star Trek crew come into it? You spa, I, I think. <laughs> oh, run rusher. <laughs> well. <laughs> yep. 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 Well. <laughs> Rum Rusher, that's pretty great. I tried to make a cape, but I was too lazy. <laughs> People making fan art. <laughs> 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 <sighs> okay, are we gonna talk about this game? We're gonna be nope. a good little let's player. It's gonna nope. not nope. be terrible. People. What game? I'm not Once playing a game. I don't know what you're talking about. CJ, he did, he did backflips. Let's let's make some fan fiction. Okay, one time, first aid kite was a broken human being who read bad fiction to people on the internet for attention. No, it's for money mostly. Okay, there's a difference. Let's go check there's out what David Cross is up to. That's a lot of dollar. <laughs> Frequently bought together, Trevor's tricks, bridges, and cruelty. Yes. I like to want to know. I'll agree with some of that. Price for all three, forty-three dollars and eighty-five cents. Wow. How expensive is this crap? Uh, Trevor's tricks is twenty dollars in paperback form, which means that it's available for paperback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just chill out with the hardback. I prefer my furry fan fiction in uh, hardback form, excuse me very much. Hey, what up, Z? Nothing is up, Carl, apart from my blood pressure. And the... <laughs> 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 Something is not right. <laughs> Everything's just fine. This is totally normal. Everything's totally normal. Something is amiss. I don't think that you can get deals this great anywhere in town. <laughs> Crash bombs. Fuzzwolf. 
Fuzzwolf has been an active participant in the furry fandom since 1998 or thereabouts. His work is mostly adults-themed, male-male stories, often starring foxes and wolves. In 2008, he purchased Fur Planet Productions, an independent publisher of comics and novels for the furry community. He lives in Texas with his partner and fellow writer, Taryn. What? This guy actually found someone to live with? I can't believe that. Kyle Gold writes primarily anthropomorphic furry in parentheses, fiction, and is most famous for his stories in a renaissance world, Volley, Pendant of Fortune, The Prisoner's Release, and Shadow of the Father, and his stories in a contemporary world, Waterways, Out of Position, and Isolation Play. He has won eight Ursa Major Awards for his novels and short stories. Out of Position also won the Rainbow Award for Best Gay Novel of 2009, and in 2010, his short story, Race to the Moon, published in New Fables, was nominated for a WSFA Short Story Award. Other strange things he likes to write about include mystical decks of cards, superheroes, and sports. His novel, Out of Position, takes place in the world of professional football. In 2010, he released both Shadow of the Father which takes place in the world of Volley, and Bridges, a short novel about the building and breaking of relationships. Send him an email. The sequel, to, the sequel to Out of Position, titled Isolation Play, was released in January 2011. He was not born in California, but now considers it his home. He loves to travel and dine out with his partner many years, Kit Silver, and can be seen at furry conventions in California around the world, around the country, and abroad with his friend K.M. Hirosaki. He hosts a podcast about writing called Unsheathed. That's by a Kit. terrible name for a podcast. <laughs> and, and although Kit and K.M. both enjoy a glass full of wine, Kyle prefers Coke Zero to fuel his podcasting and writing. Hey, you're an expert at bad fiction. Yes. When are you going to start writing your own bad fiction? Hmm. I don't probably write. use it to get paid. Yeah. I don't write anymore. Y you should. Because these guys make a lot of money by basically spinning out crap and so can you. Because that's what you do. Yeah, except here's the thing. Like, I think that I spew out crap, but other people tell me that I don't spew out crap. And honestly, I can't put forth the effort to do that. I don't write anymore, I just copy, like, strings of text, put them into a, a program, strip out important verbs, adjectives, and then I just play ad-libs until I get smut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start writing after I beat the stage, okay? It'll, it'll be like a writer's workshop. NaNoWriMo? <laughs> We need Dude, to write the Flash ultimate Man's furry fan fiction. Flashman's stage is really short. You can beat it in like a minute. War and peace. Peace in our time. <laughs> War and piss. Oh shit, I knew it was there. I was sitting there thinking, what, what, can, what can I do about this? You found it. Whore and piss. Even better. Ah, oh, damn it. I wish I remembered the lines from Kung Pao. I don't... I've ate of something, but there's nothing here. Is anybody else seeing this? Yes. 
That's not uh, a weapon, a... but I have. Use, use it. it. See what happens. Nothing. Switch weapons. Save this file to a different slot and reload it. Why would I want to reload it? Oh, you're fine. I thought it was broken. How many bullets did you have left in the minigun when... Uh, it's infinite, I'm pretty sure, because of that mission. Message mm. from Dr. Light. <laughs> if that's your special weapon slot, you might as well swap it out. Mm. Hey cop, you trying to run me over? Okay, I'm gonna start writing. Okay. I'm gonna open up a Microsoft Word starter. As a starter? Yeah, it's. Hey man, you I don't know what this is, I just use it. Okay. What am I writing about today? Hot dogs. Hot. Hot dogs. Okay. So I'm assuming this is uh, erotic furry fan fiction about two dogs. Bye, Julie. Age six. <laughs> By Alex. This guy is T Bone Mendez. Muscle. And who's that guy? That's Jizzy B. He's the big town. Once he helps up upon a time there were two Dogs. Dogs. No, that's not what I said. One of the dogs was hot. The other Cold. The no, cold dog was quite jealous of the hot dog. One no. day, the cold dog went up to the hot dog and said, Um, 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 cold dog. For you see, all dogs greet each other and speak all their sentences ending with the word dog um hot dog responded hot dog cold dog then proceeded to stab I'm really bad at this. This is really boring. Just think of the Jurassic Park theme inside your head. You're not making it erotic enough. That's your problem. <laughs> Hot dogs. There are these two sausages. See? Strange things. You have to, have to change all occurrences. What sounded like a weaver? I couldn't really just really tell you what else goes into them. And now I can found a bone again. in one once. And now I can oh. see words. You found again. a bone in a hot dog once? Bone meal. Oh, well, yeah. It was strange. Either way, you know that a lot of people happen to enjoy hot dogs. Some people <laughs> will make hot dogs to eat plain. Some people enjoy putting multiple hot dogs on a sandwich. Some people will take hot dogs and chop them up and sell them as VR sausages. Why is the heavy there? He's Others a pimp. Will... <laughs> oh lord. Hey, by the way, you guys can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Alright, cool. Who are you? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the guy who begged tight to do Jesus in space. Oh. Begged <sighs> right, to do Jesus in space? <laughs> to, to read it. Blast off. I love how all the girls just like clip through the heavy's model because he's so fat. <laughs> 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 and 
Oh, his eyes are just so... He looks like stone. He's gonna eat them. Of cuts from the middle to the end in order to turn the hot dog into a sort of vaguely octopus like shape. This is rather cute and all, though I feel I must stress that a good octopus is not a hot dog. <laughs> I personally enjoy rubbing hot dogs together, especially the ones that are injected with cheese. The reason for this is because once they are hot enough, the cheese is just waiting to burst out from its inner shell, pulsating, boiling, throbbing, <laughs> wishing that it could escape its fresh tomb. Oh lord. The many applications of hot dog paste. The friction of the two cheddar brats rubbing together <laughs> is more than enough to cause some kind of disaster. Ejaculatory disaster. Oh no! <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? I am fighting. Glorious and something beautiful and something also quite terrible. Stopfish, I hope you're happy. I'm it's quite ready. tragic, really. I am quite happy. What is what is Bubble Man weak to? Bubble Man is weak to. He's weak to erotic fan fiction. <laughs> he's, weak to, he's he's weak to the Mega Buster. I think he's just a really easy boss in general. The boomerang just kills him really fast too, because he has no uh, you know, invincibility. <laughs> My personal favorite thing to do with hot dogs is to cover them in grape jello. The reason for this is because you can then eat the grape jello and then you can eat the hot dog. But never at the same time. Grape jello is tasty and eating grape hot dogs <laughs> is also tasty, which is why I happen to enjoy grape hot dog jello dogs. What? <laughs> what? This, we, we must make this become I also email. enjoy oh, taking mind. hot dogs, putting them on nice, warm, toasted, thick, cheeky bums, and covering them in a thin layer of watered-down, creamy Magic. icing. Oh. oh my. That's, tastes, that sounds kind of sickening, actually. <laughs> it tastes very good. And by very good, I of course mean <laughs> sexual. <laughs> very sexual. Oh, it's that kind of icing. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> I, and this is the only way for me to express that. Oops. Uh, I love That's that. all I am really getting at is that <laughs> I enjoy a good sausage from time to time. I happen to be able to get a package of 24 sausages for four dollars <laughs> this is a really good price considering i only ever get the chance to eat about 12 of them before the other 12 mysteriously disappear up my colon thank, thank, thank you miko <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> 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 I saw the opportunity and I had to. <laughs> Treat it with respect. <laughs> oh.
Oh lord. Are you dumped it on tight? Well, you're done making up stupid lines. I don't know, I don't really have a proper hand. Oh god. That was why. Well, just, I thought it fit the theme. Seriously, as well, a beard. Just a beard to my colon. I think that's a perfect ending spot right there. You tune in. <laughs> then you then you have a sequel hook if, where he finds them. He has to find them. In the toilet. <laughs> I need to find them. Would where have you they gone? Be willing to help me find my ass dogs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't stop trying to eat my microphone. That's not something you can eat. Stop that. <laughs> no, yeah, stop that. No, stop that. Okay, who else would like to write about hot dogs? Come on, step up. <laughs> I can't beat that. I, I want a text. I want. Uh, I want that in a text file or a word document or something. I want that tattooed all like down my back. <laughs> Will you help me find my ass dogs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I want that. <coughs> you want it in you? <laughs> no, not, no, not that much. I, I, I want that in like a document. I, I want that on me. You just go save that or something. I Please. want that on my hard drive. Oh, oh, oh I'll, I'll plug my USB into your hard drive. <laughs> That's not erotic at all. That's just file transfer. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. But Let me teach you a thing or two about FTP. <laughs> I, I just felt like Stopfish was trying to challenge me to write, so I decided to show him my writing skills. <laughs> and you have beat him. Well, good job. <laughs> you did it. Congratulations. Now go sell it. A lot of people in that go alley. Sell it on the internet. Link me to the book anyway, Heavenator. Maybe I'll be able to find it. Best blocks. Okay, so compare my story about hot dogs or Trevor's tricks. <laughs> I like your story better. Like, yeah, your story's <laughs> way better. I don't even know what I was typing. I was just like thinking about shit, and the first thing I, that came to mind it was just like, yeah, I just write that. Whatever, I'm gay. <laughs> Maybe you should just read what he just wrote. <laughs> oh god, I just noticed that Maiko put up a giant thing to say fake. Hey, hey, there were two sausages. Yeah, I did that a while ago. Things. Made the meat, lots of meat. Couldn't really tell you what else goes into them. I found a bone in one once. Bone meal, rather. It was rather strange. Either way, I know that a lot of people happen to enjoy hot dogs. Some people will make hot dogs to eat plain. Some people enjoy putting multiple hot dogs on a sandwich. Some people will take hot dogs and chop them up and sell them as Vienna sausages. I happen to know a person who will take hot dogs and make a series of cuts from the middle to the end in order to turn the hot dog into a sort of vaguely octopus -like shape. This is rather cute and all, so I feel I must stress that a good octopus is not a hot dog. <laughs> <sighs> and then it just gets better from there. How to eat fried furries, the new Bizarro author. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrifying. It is horrifying. Well, you know, in the possibly cathartic too. In the relating books, uh, drawing fantastic furries, the ultimate guide to drawing anthropomorphic characters. The ultimate the guide. guide to furries. The furry guide to furries. <laughs> the manga guide to mo uh, molecular biology. The manga guide to manga. Just <laughs> to give your bitchies white hair. How to draw, how to draw white hair. Don't color. There you go, that's all I got. I want you to draw the mystery of the submersible hot dog. Who, me? That's, uh, no, okay. <laughs>
That sounds like something good. <laughs> Jade's face was hot dogs and bubble man. <laughs> oh, you missed something wonderful. It's pretty intense. <laughs> oh, I'm having a good time. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> once, once the furry stopped, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and then he got forty bucks for it. I got a good laugh and then some unfortunate knowledge. I'll hopefully never have a youth. Take him out again. This is all good. Heavenator found the book about uh, how to make your own fursuit. Because there's something wrong with you. And why can't I crush these Metroids with a sword? Can you find a video on blip of women in like really scantily clad clothing of some variety building a fursuit maybe? That'd put me on the right track. That, I, no, I that's still terrible. That what the hell are you talking about? Not the phone video, anything but the phone video. <laughs> what is phone? Are you guys not, talking about those two not, furries not, phone not adventure? The, phone video. the video yes. that less beardly Retsu prayed, yes. I'm misogynist's phone, a phone ad adventure. Oh, okay. why? Why? Because that video. Foam Adventures, Cat, come here. Let me hug you for protection, please. Hey, they made lips in my shoes. That is not very good. Oh, we. Hey, baby, we're gonna be the same size when we lay down. <laughs> well, yeah, that's barely. Well, he did World of Goo. And then he made a sort of Retsu Prey thing about. Yeah, just a general high editing Retsu Prey thing. It was originally just just bad Super Mario World ROM hack videos and stuff. But then he went insane. Then he did other things, which were pretty entertaining and had pretty decent value. Then he stopped because he went crazy. Yeah. But I, I really like this thread. Oh, no, and the best cool. part was when they made a passive aggressive video about him. Like there's oh, yeah, guy who mock. There's that one guy who did a video that he mocked and he made another video and the guy made a video of him playing World of Goo really badly and mocking Les Beardly the entire time. Only his critiques were immature at best and stupid at worst. He just kept making fart noises with the microphone for about Five ten minutes. Yeah, we're like, oh, look at me! I have standards in my videos. I'm such a stuck guy, bro. Da, 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 da. And it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I thought for sure he was gonna back. flip over. This is Get not. It, it, oh, it, good lord! It, He's it still going. An hour to reach Bubble Man because of you guys. At uh, hour to reach Heat Man because of you guys. <laughs> you guys <are laughs> that car is very impressive. And whoever's driving that is a real pro. Now it's time for the other side. <laughs> is the goal to destroy this other people's cars? Yes. Luigi, what are you doing? Luigi, no! <laughs> Luigi. Luigi's... Just having fun over there. Luigi's having fun over there. One hour to reach heat, man. You are such a butt. 
Show me the Metroid. Why does it require a sword to kill? Why can't I use my hammer? What are you talking about? That's like, <laughs> the, first, that's like the third time you said that. Like, what is this? Are you like you are not some, authorized like... to use that? Well, I am clearly insane. <laughs> I feel like we are all insane. <laughs> yes. Uh, I am I not that. insane. I just. Almost enjoy peering into the abyss. It's knowledge. It's nothing that I'll ever use in any real situation. But it, it's knowledge and it's learning. Knowledge. Nothing. It's just garbage. Exactly. It's You're garbage knowledge. I am a hoarder. Stuff. I'm like a hoarder. And, but instead of garbage, I hoard knowledge of the horrible things on the internet. That yeah, is kind of a shitty job. It's it's for research, so that way I can be the best armchair psychologist I can possibly be because that's what a goon does. I was not even going to say armchair wrestler. <laughs> armchair wrestler. <laughs> that too. I, I uh, would have been happy if you just stopped. My left armchair. arm is so much more it's so much more powerful than my right. Why is your left arm so much more stronger than your right? Why Are is you your grammar so horrendous? I would say because I'm an armchair wrestler. It's not because I jerk off a lot what I have no idea what 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 <laughs> what <laughs> neither do I I don't even understand what's going I on I only wrestle furniture <laughs> <laughs> my best you record was three seconds against the couch it was one of those ugly flower pattern things those things are very strong all right time to read another story this one's gonna be short just because uh, so uh, yeah oh good the peculiar Quandary of Simon Canopus Artile. This is important version of Benjamin Button. Yeah, I was I was getting that vibe too, but I don't know. Like it's the exact same thing. The only difference is that. Peculiar well. quandary, the curious case of Benjamin Button, Simon Canopus Artile. That, they didn't even get the alliteration right. What's wrong with them? The flaw that makes the masterpiece. For most of his wizarding life, Simon Canopus Artile lived in the same splendid little house that was nestled up against the trunk of a giant tree. The tree was an Ethan oak, only it was much larger than any normal Ethan oak should be, having grown to its inordinate size due to the fact that Simon had spent over two centuries living in proximity to it, and magic flowed through Simon more readily than it did most people, including other wizards. When a wizard li when a wizard lives anywhere, Though, a giant tree or no, a full-fledged community typically grows up around them within five or six decades, since, as a general rule, a wizard is a very good thing for any town to have, and after this happens, most wizards decide against packing up and leaving since the inevitable will inevitably happen again, and most simply can't be bothered to make the effort anyway. Simon, in addition to being a wizard, was also a fox. To judge only by the outward oh, appearance okay. of his Vulpin's features, one might guess him to be 29 or 30, but he was in fact 263 years old. Which was respectable, though for a wizard, certainly not all that ancient. Most people who knew him didn't know exactly how old he was, just as it is improper to ask a lady her age, so too is it improper to ask a wizard. But they all knew that he was a fair shake older than appearances led on. Valerine Dunwich was a well-mannered vixen who was slightly younger than Simon looked. She was the second eldest daughter of the Mayor Dunwich, the kindly fox for who, for the past few decades, had been in charge of Carina, the town that had sprung up around Simon's home some 200 years prior. She came to see Simon several times a week, usually bringing some kind of homemade cakes or biscuits to eat along with the afternoon tea. And if Simon didn't emerge from his house for over a week or so, she would bring by two armfuls of groceries, and sometimes Simon had a tendency to forget to eat whenever his assistant, Anton, was out on one of his many errands to fetch books, trinkets, and other assorted wizardly things from distant locales. Growing up, Simon had never been one to notice whether or not he was the kind of person to draw the attention of vixens like Valorin, because he spent most of his time with his muzzle stuck in a book, and very little of it watching the ladies. It didn't seem that many other people noticed him either, because having one's muzzle stuck in a book makes one difficult to see. Hmm? Wizards! You're a wizard, Fox. <clears throat> You're a blizzard, Harry. 
<laughs> You're a gizzard, Harry. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. You're a hairy wizard. <laughs> You're a hairy wizard, gizzard. People do know his love of old texts and of libraries and of ancient artifacts, which were really little more than over-glorified knickknacks. And it didn't surprise anyone when he stated at a very young age his desire to become a wizard someday. <sighs> I want to be a wizard when I grow up. Shut up and eat your gruel. You'll be a chair like I told you. But did surprise them with the fact that he actually had the talent to become one. Becoming a wizard takes more than a simple desire to do so, and not everyone has what some people call the gift. <laughs> Simon did have this gift, though he personally didn't think of it as anything terribly special. To Simon, magic just came naturally, both in the sense of skills developing without much trouble, and also in the sense that magic itself, due to the fox's peculiar nature, did indeed come to him, in much the same way that metal is drawn to a magnet. Sometimes metal is drawn to wizards too, but oh this usually God. only happens if their attention is distracted while they're in the midst of channeling a mystical, uh, a certain degree of mystical power. People who were sensitive to things mystical would often claim that he, he even smelled of magic. Those who weren't would claim he just smelled of Jasper. By the age of 12, Simon had signed his contract binding him to the Laws of Magicians Charter, a millennia-old document repeatedly amended and revised, though it was that codified what was and what was not allowable for a wizard of any realm to do. Simon was never one to cause trouble or mischief like the other young foxes of his hometown, and so the following rules was not at issue. And, in fact, centuries later, Simon himself would go on to register his own amendments and revisions to the Charter. It was Simon's love of books, attention to detail, and wizardly acumen that quickly led to his becoming a historian, specifically a historian of magic. And one day, the grand historian of magic, wizarding, and spellcraft. Truth be told, the world quite needed someone to fill the role of a magical historian in Simon's time, but that hadn't been a concern of his when he'd made the decision to do it anyway. Writing new texts about the history of magic was a daunting task, one which required the reading of many, many old texts, along with the ability to translate old languages that few people spoke anymore, and, in at least two cases, a bulk of text and language that nobody spoke anymore which necessitated the use of magic itself to even glean the meaning of those forgotten words. Simon was competent, he loved what he did, and it gave him plenty of occasions to keep his muzzle firmly wedged between the pages of book after book. The thing that most often got his muzzle out from those books was Valorin. Whenever this isn't Valorin would visit, well. <laughs> their conversations could go on for several hours, with her talking about the latest town gossip and him telling her about cursive wow, variants of shot. mystic ruins from the Neopardon age which she didn't quite follow, but in which she attempted interest all the time. <laughs> or about fabulous extinct creatures called dragons, which she found dreadfully frightening yet enthralling to hear about. She didn't have two and a half centuries worth of knowledge in her head, but she was quick to catch on and quick to chuckle whenever Simon would insert one of his all too rare jokes into a conversation. And he'd always smile a handsome smile when she did that. Valerie okay, okay. Wiley too. Wily one down. It's taking me forever to beat these. She was the sort of vixen that just about every male fox in town, save Simon himself, was very keen on courting. Simon no, didn't the significance of the fact that she turned down all her suitors and continued bringing him tasty cakes. But then Simon wasn't much of a usual fox either. He did, however, notice and acknowledge that she was very pretty, at least, and he had told her on more than one occasion that she was very lovely, or that she was wearing a very lovely dress. Or that she had a very lovely smile. Invariably, though, about two or three times each afternoon they spent together, Simon would find himself staring at the little blemish of white fur on the right side of her muzzle. The tiny white patch was nestled amidst the swath of soft russet and would have hardly been noticeable at first glance. But that teensy break in red always drew Simon's attention, and he couldn't help but wonder as he looked at it, why is it there? After a few seconds of Simon staring, Valorin would take notice, and she would blush and turn her head away as she tried to hide her smiling. It made her very happy to know that Simon could lose his train of thought while looking at her face. Simon, she said one day, after she caught him staring a bit more than usual, you seem a bit distracted lately. Are you doing all right? There were these two sausages, see? Strange things, made of meat, lots of meat. Couldn't really tell you what else goes <laughs> into them. I found a bone in one once. Bone meal, rather. It was strange either way. I know that a lot of people enjoy hot dogs. Some people put hot dogs that are new flavor. Some people 
one by putting <laughs> hot dogs on a sandwich. Some people take two hot dogs and chop them up and sell them as Vienna sausages. I happen to know a person who will take hot dogs and make a series of cuts from the middle to the end in order to turn the hot dog into a sort of vaguely octopus-like shape. This is rather cute and all, though I must feel I must stress that a good hot octopus is not a hot dog. I personally enjoy rubbing hot dogs together, especially the ones that are injected with cheese. The reason for this is because they are hot enough, the cheese is just waiting to burst out from its inner shell, pulsating, boiling, throbbing, wishing that it could escape its fleshy tomb. The friction of these two cheddar brats rubbing together is more than enough to cause some kind of ejaculatory disaster. My favorite thing to do with hot dogs is to cover them in grape jello. The reason for this is because you can then eat the grape jello, and then you can eat the hot dog. Eating grape jello is tasty, and eating grape hot dogs is also tasty, which is why I happen to enjoy grape hot dog jello dogs. I also happen to enjoy taking hot dogs and putting them on nice, warm, toasted, thick, cheeky buns and covering them in a thin layer of watered-down creamy icing. It tastes very good, and by very good, I of course mean sexual. Very sexual. Extremely sexual. I'm gay. I guess all I'm really saying is that as I enjoy a good sausage from time to time, I happen to be able to get a package of four 24 sausages for four dollars. This is a really good price, considering I only ever get the chance to eat about 12 of them before the other 12 mysteriously disappear up my colon. I need to find them. <laughs> by my ass dogs. <laughs> what the fuck just happened there? Oh, uh, fan fiction. Were you not I finished for reading this terribly boring story about a wizard fox and changed it into hotdogs.txt. <laughs> Seriously, I, that I was just, like, that wasn't I, even like hilariously bad. It was just like boring. Oh my gosh, like, I tried to pay attention. I really did. Well, but if you want to pay while, attention, that was your first mistake. Complimenting the woman or whatever, I just kind of zoned out to what you were saying, man. It was just kind of like. So hot dogs. Uh, someone linked something in the Twitch chat. Um, they read Jason. this next. <laughs> yeah, Kai, read the thing Jay Spade's linked. It's something about a controller. Oh, I you hate this boss it. so much. Hey, can I read it? Yeah. See ya. As the young man mashed his soft, the soft rubber buttons on his Nintendo Game Boy, he leered fiercely at the pale green display. A sense of anticipation spread across his face. Watching the image transition from frame to frame, he slowly slipped his clammy hand into his pants and curled his bony white fingers around his eager manhood. Back and forth, over and over, his hand moved as swiftly and, and repetitious, repetitive word over his cock as the commands he inputted into the primitive computer. Finally, his efforts bear fruit, and that, and what it was then that she appeared. His mind went blank. A single dim light, lamp perched over the dim L LCD screen, began to fade from his vision. When he opened his eyes, oh, he was in a miracle had occurred. He was in the game. From the corner of his vision, he sensed movement. And, still firm, clenched around his member, he turned to see that which he desired above all else. Her silvery locks, drawn of in a bun, shimmering in the morning sun, a dress as dark as the young man's wardrobe drapped her figure. As she swept her broom back and forth, brushing a lush green grass in front of her, he too noticed his presence in Megan's gate. What the shit is this? <laughs> what is this? Seriously. Seriously. His mouth sadly agape, he inched towards the heavenly damsel. But something wasn't right. Something seemed off. The warm, inviting look he adored. Was that not the woman he so desired? The features were identical. The sharp, blocky formations framing her perfect green face uncanny. But her eyes were blank. <laughs> Empty. Before he could act, her mouth began to open. Slowly at first. <laughs> Just as he reached the flow, began to stretch, stretch even further. Those began to curling over and forming a tube like structure where there had once been a charming smile. She fell to her knees and slammed her arms on the ground, the broom soundlessly to her side, and a horrible, piercing screech began to emanate from her direction in a way that he was unsure if she was the true origin of the noise. His body tensed, and he began to turn and run. A single perfectly round orb rocketed out of the no longer recognizable oral orifice of his formal love. Moments before impact, the boy's face screwed up in an unnatural shape, and the dense orb cemented the expression into place. His body went limp, 
He began to kick himself off. He struggled to fix his gaze from the grotesque creature who threatened him. Before his vision stayed, he aptly decided that his time would be better spent fleeing. That would see much longer. And he pulled himself upright as quickly as his dazed mind would command. As he ran, he noticed something strange about his surroundings. As he ran, he felt an inclination, a feeling that there was something special about the place he was moving around in. He pointed the point of occurrence, and a strange sensation overcame him. A rush of power overcame him, and in his haste, a flash of light bleached the landscape, and before he knew it, he found himself somewhere new. And he was observing, and as he observed his new surroundings, he noticed the outlet a new figure pushed up atop a nearby tree. He shouted towards the shape, and it turned to see him. What? How about some fishing, little buddy? The man raised his eyebrow, only charged you ten rupees. Fucking it's Link, and it Link's awakening, I knew it. The boy hastily confessed that he only had dollars, but as he checked his pocket, he was surprised to discover that they had been filled with the multicolored gems that he had known all too well in this world's currency. His curiosity, he handed over what he believed to be ten of them, and the man handed the boy a long, featureless fishing pole. The man's lips stretched into a wry smile. Here's how you do it. Use left and right on the D-pad on the cross to aim the cast. Once you hook a fish, push the button rapidly to reel him in. In an instant, the entire world shrunk to a single point of light and expanded to the scale of a single atom. The boy felt trapped. He struggled against an unseen force, grasping for breath. Strange colors and shapes swirled and warped in front of him. The ground felt strange, felt unstable beneath his feet. Looking down, and he realized that what he thought was ground at the same time non-existent and yet clearly present. A soothing melody encompassed his body, and as his consciousness faded once again, he felt the fabric of reality tear. He could feel the fundamental properties of the universe being scattered and shuffled all around him. His skin burned, his breath became frigid, his spine began to curl, and he felt his jaw begin to unhinge as his mouth engulfed his skull. His body began to unravel. One of his one by one, his bones came away and slipped into the aether. Whatever possibly be left of his oral facility sent a gentle wind whispering to him the secrets of the universe. Life is all. Life is nothing. Pixel by pixel, we become whole, and yet we are only complete by the rules that bind us. To be free of that re restriction is to know the essence of, ex of existence. Set apart on. Become one with all. Become one with none. A fuzzy image begins to focus. A head. A body. Glad we went from self-insertion video game fact fan fiction to uh, uh, As essential angry. Pretty much. Two eyes set apart on either side of the skull. A tear. A tear shape perched in the center. Coming to a point at the bottom. Colors flow into place like running point. Like running plate. Paint. Late, tipped with black. His form is finite. He cannot grasp my true identity. He fades into a shapeless black mass before solidifying into a more familiar shape. The dial set in the center. A, head, a hand set shade atop. I wasn't kidding when I said pay. Now you'll pay the ultimate price. A thousand beams of brightest light pierced my corporeal essence, pulling my soul away in countless opposite directions. As my existence faded, I realized that I had an erection the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> is that the end? That is the, that is the end. Wow. <laughs> that is terrible. Ugh. Also, I'm getting bored with San Andreas. I think I'm going to start playing Edge or something. Let's all play a multiplayer game and talk about uh, bad writing. I like, I would like, love any Game Boy game. It has to be Link's Awakening. And then the fishing pole confirmed it. And then the fucking shopkeeper, he stole the bow. Damn, boy. I don't think he sells the bow. I thought I only showed the shovel. Military the shovel, that's right. 
No, 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 no. You buy the shovel and then buy you, the, you buy the boat, right? I guess. I think so, because the boat costs about 900 right? Yeah, the boat costs, like, something ridiculous. And you can get it really early if you just scale it. And you can go back in, because that's the dialogue. We're gonna do the Other two power ups. That. That. That was genius. In like the worst possible way. Asset. Right there. It's like, holy shit. What game is this? A platformer. Oh, Ed, yeah, I know this one. It's the oh, one by with the, the way, cubes. I'll be streaming tomorrow. So. <laughs> someone I... made. Oh god. My turn to be the star. Oh man, someone made an erotic fanfiction of Mega Arms breaking the week's awakening. <laughs> oh my god. That will must be terrible. It's kind of hilarious. Oops. You jumped the gun there, buddy. I'm bad at this game, by the way. In case anybody's oh, I have wondering. This game. I, I'm no better at it, so don't worry. Whoops. I have something similar called Rush. Uh, Rush is by the same company, but, like, it's not actually the same kind of game. Whereas Rush is about sort of programming things uh, so that you can set the cubes to Damn rotate it. in the right direction and such. Edge is more of a puzzle platformer. And also about going, nope. That reminds me, I need to re-download Code Hero. The only reason I have Rush is because it's part of that potato sack thing for Portal 2 a while back. And I ended up winning every Valve game as a result of it. Well, Rush is still a really good game to have, so... The only games I got that were any use were Amnesia, Super Meat Boy, Toki Tori, kind of. Killing floor and oh, it was sixty cents last saw them sale. Yeah. That's worth it. That's definitely yeah. worth it. Okay, I'm I'm done playing Mega Man. I banned the sick bill. Write down my password. Whoops. That's not how you climb. <laughs> At least we got you up there faster. Taking damage to save time. Oh man. I know this. Huh. I have a doctorate in climology. Also, I'm gonna uh, save Kite's story. It's pretty great. I did too. Hot dogs. Uh, I I have it saved as hot dogs. Txt. Txt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will also save it as hot dogs. Txt. Txt. Oh, I'm dogs. Just... Txt. Txt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't do it too many times. It's just stupid. Save. There we go. <sighs> Gonna oh, maybe I'm troll right bomb there. 4chan with that. I don't know. I'm not sure that's the best. Why not? <laughs> Why? Because you might get banned from 4chan. Oh man, I'm gonna get banned from 4chan. I got banned from 4chan, nothing would be gained, and nothing would be lost. <laughs> oh, that has value, of course. You got an achievement. Nothing you did in that performance was perfect. What the hell are they talking about? The hell? What was that? It's been fun, but I have Can to have you punch straight up walls as the uh, mini block? Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do, but it's not cooperating. <laughs> right, it's been fun, dudes, but I have work tomorrow, so I'm gonna head to bed. Alright. Later. Later, all. Um, I should also head to bed real quick. There we go. I will never sleep. Uh, Man, I tried that small. once, but then it makes job a lot more bad. Later. Later. 
10 bucks. Whoa, I'm glad that that cup was empty, otherwise, it would have made a terrible mess. Alex publishes furry books. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, I don't think I do. No, I think I can prove that you do, in fact, publish furry uh, books. I saw the printer press behind you. You can't. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the fursuit in your closet. Whoa. Nobody's supposed to see that. <laughs> Need to buy new closet doors. It's not a closet, it's my fursona. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should make like a persona game, except instead of the personas, you summon fursonas. Oh, that was. Fursona Gold. <laughs> fursona Golden. Fursona, fursona 4. Fursona 2 Arena. featuring Nazi Hitler. <laughs> and the Great Persecution. Can't equip any of these items. All right. Honestly, uh, geez, I, I don't even know. <laughs> Why? I, I, I think uh, Micah's gonna get his wish. I'm gonna probably get a bed here, so. I have to remember names of these two stories and bring them up next time I go to the stream. <laughs> All right, I may as well cut the stream. It's kind of late. Yeah, we yeah. can talk about boxes all night. Come on, just us. <laughs> Come on, it's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, it's great, but boxes. It sounds great. It's great, but these these, fo these boxes. Oh God, I remember this. They don't have a erotic fan fiction. Damn it. Wait, don't end your stream yet. I have to read this. Fine. Okay, let's read this. A mystery okay. man walks into a bar. He flings open the doors doors and sits down at the bar. It, it is, is the mysterious, mysterious Johnny John Applebasket. Apple mysterious <laughs> man of murder. It is the it is year 2390. And the cowboys, and the cowboys of, the of the 1890s have been cloned. cloned. They were deemed to are a kick. And are being held in an oh, enormous enclosed land. land. A perfectly replicated a version of the version Old West. West. Here they are free to have guns, have guns fights, up. drink whiskey, so and have sex have with sex whores as they please. please. Johnny John Applebasket Apple is one of the few men employed in the land, forced to travel the Old West, West. and patrol and for any non-Old West, West behavior. Whiskey. One whiskey, whiskey please, please. Stout Johnny fish said. Is gay. Hey man. Ah, made you laugh. Hey man. Don't yeah. knock the gay man. No, no, no. I was just saying that you're gay. Oh, that's, that's messed okay, up. I'm gay too. Okay. Be gay together. Yeah. And go ahead and read. Why don't you say something? Jeez. <laughs> You ruined your synchronization. Ezio, you fool. <laughs> Come on, read the Wait, story. Wait, why is Juice Weed saying hold up? Because that's what my intermission page said on the stream. Oh. <laughs> is that? Does the... Until I changed it. <laughs> <laughs> A dog's... A dog's... <laughs> <laughs> Michael, if I give you a gift, will you just put it up on me, on your screen? <laughs> All right, put it. You got to put it on Imgur or something, because open broadcasting software does not have drag and drop functionality for that, like XSplit does. Oh, does it drag and drop? I didn't know that. XSplit does. Open broadcaster software does not. <laughs> I just, I just kind of browse for it. Just like here you go, uh, Mike. Just save and use add media file, or whatever you use. <sighs> All 
All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll read them in an entertaining way. Blister is not gay, you know. He just likes to rub his nipples on camera in LP. <laughs> Well, yeah. Did everyone do that? <laughs> I thought everyone did that. A mystery man walks into a bar. He flings open the door and sits down at the bar. It is the mysterious Johnny Applebasket, mysterious man of murder. It is the year 2390, and the cowboys of the 1890s have been cloned. They were deemed too archaic and are being held in an <laughs> enclosed land, a perfectly replicated version of the Old West. Did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Wait, where did you find that? <laughs> Tumblr, if the link he gave me is any indication. Oh my god. This is the best dream. <laughs> oh, that one. Oh, I've had that. Wasn't ever relevant until now, though. <laughs> uh, Christ. <laughs> they are free to have guns fights, drink whiskey, and have sex with whores as they please. Johnny Applebasket is one of the few men employed in the land force to travel the Old West and patrol for any non-Old West behavior. One whiskey, please, Johnny said. A man stands up. Hey, you, you're Johnny Applebasket, ain't ya? Who wants to know? William McGee, you shot my pa back in Albuquerque. William shouted. Banny's high on your head, and I'm an eager in for some revengerin. He stood up and pulled out his gun. Put that away, boy. Save your life. Johnny replied, I'll kill you. William fired his gun twice, but before the first bullet could ever even leave the gun, Apple Basket had thrown his wiki into the air, pulled out his apple, and placed it onto his head. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Bam! Johnny zapped the bullets into the past, and they flew out from an old book depository. He sidekicked William right out the saloon door, then caught his whiskey and drank it down. He walked out of the bar and reached out his hand, offering it to William. I'm sorry about your pa, William, but I had some zombie gold business with him. If you want, be free to travel with me. William stared for a moment. Yes, just dab a basket McGee. No, you travel with me. You leave your past behind. From now on, Johnny paused, you will be the salad tosser. Suddenly, a messenger appeared. What? Johnny, your old nemesis back in town. You mean? Yes. Abraham Washington Lincoln. What? So continued? <laughs> what? What? Johnny paused. Micah, do you record your streams? Twitch does it automatically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I can finally just... Micah, what? Just link this entire stream everywhere. Just a recording file of it. Uh... Isolate kite reads bed for erotica. Dot... <laughs> you can make a Twitch highlight, yeah. Dot mp3. Or I could just upload the whole thing to YouTube and let you guys sort through it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably yeah. what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. So is that it? Are we done here? I think we, so. We're never done here. <laughs> no. I wanna be done. I got linked to a girl getting hit by a hot dog. <laughs> Rebecca gets hit by a hot dog. <laughs> oh, when you upload it to YouTube, you need to put in annotations of the pictures Rum Rusher has been drawing. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and remember to do that. Can you include... So you better save all those pictures in your favorites. Wait, can you include like a picture in YouTube now? Or is it a URL to a picture? To get you to add one more picture to your stream. There's already three. I don't know. I've never used this broadcasting software before. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to implode. And then it does implode. And it was a good day. Okay, hold up.
save. You know, now that I think about it, Goblin Pad is actually awful in terms of security, but only because if somebody watches you input your Goblin Pad enough times, mm. they could single out which numbers are yours. Pretty much. I wonder if I can put a URL in this thing. Let's see. Because I don't want to save this to my computer. <laughs> it would be incriminating. If it behaves anything like... Uh... Okay, image four. <laughs> I can't paste into the box. This is terrible. Type it out. I can't type into the box. It's just, it's grayed out because it's a browse. Damn it. Well, wait, I thought you could usually paste into the browse box. Or the file uh, name at the bottom. I'm not using it's exploit, just, uh, remember? Like image, can't you just like drag and drop? No, I meant like any browse dialog on Windows. Mm mm, doesn't work. Uh, it used to work sometimes in certain programs. Which usually made it download to your temp folder and then it referenced that. Yeah, that's what, that's what it does when you do it in exploit. I guess I'll save it to my computer. Ew. <laughs> you, you want it there? Trust us. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna see what it is in a second, and you're gonna regret saying that. <laughs> <sighs> Furry dog. That's the XD. What? That gif. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna eat those words. <laughs> Maybe. Has anyone changed <laughs> So is the streaming software exploded at all? No, it's actually, thanks. it's running better thanks than XSplit. It's way less computer. system intensive. Other than Can the it? thing where if I hook an OpenGL program, it'll crash. It's actually really nice. I like it. Does it, do you think it has any chance in hell at reading your uh, capture device? Uh, well, my capture device is on a different computer, so I can't test it, but maybe. Does it maybe. let you browse? Does it let you browse for alternate sources, like webcams and shit? Yeah, yeah, I can use my webcam, I can use the DX story <laughs> pretend webcam thing. All that shit works right. fine. I'll test it out of my office and see if it's worth, you know, the conversion. Alright. Open broadcaster software. Try it out, I guess. If you don't want to pay for XSplit. <laughs> Man, this... This stream, this stream has been magical. Yeah. I think I'm. Or... I think I'm gonna end it now, though. All, all thing, <laughs> all, all horrifying things must come to a close. <laughs> you almost <laughs> said it. You almost made a terrible mistake. Almost, but I caught myself. It's okay. <laughs> what did he almost say? He, he almost uh, described <laughs> everything that ton happened tonight as. A good thing. <laughs> it was an entertaining thing, I'll give it that. <laughs> Entertainment has its merits, but... Micah, uh, I'm sorry that I read furry porn for $40, but I seriously wasn't expecting someone to actually give me $40. <laughs> Neither was I. So I you know what? It's alright. <laughs> like, I thought by saying $40, it would be obvious enough. Okay, yeah, no, no one's gonna... Hey, why do you think I changed the text? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a night then. Goodbye, yeah, stream. Yeah, it seems like a